Fat Man Beyond. I'm Kevin Smith. I am Mark Bernard. Hey! We're back. It's been a red hot minute, man. Here we are at the Scum and Villainy Cantina right here on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, uh, California. Throw your hands together so the folks at home know that you're actual and real. How have you been? I've been good, man. I've I haven't seen good. you in a red hot minute. I know. I think we've both been traveling a little bit. Where'd you go? I went to Prince George, British Columbia. Oh, shit. I know, right? You've never heard of it either. What uh, was, what, con of some yeah, sort? Yeah, the Northern Fan Con, where we were there last year. We did, a, we did a fat man up there. That's right. Yeah. You went back. They went invited back. you, not me. Hey. You know. <laughs> They're sending a pretty clear message, I guess. <laughs> Um, how was it? Uh, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It's a it's a small con. There's like nine, ten thousand people up there, but they're all Canadians, so they're the sweetest people in the world. Um, they were just lovely and welcoming, and they. This all sounds like code for they were all white. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but very nice white people. Yeah, yeah. because I've met some. Uh, <laughs> But they kept on trying to fatten me up with poutine. And I'm like, it's been done already, guys. Look at me. I'm fine. I'm ready to be cooked. What do you do at a con when I'm not there? What is, what is a solo? <laughs> What's that like? I you just talk keep, to yourself? What I just keep do? explaining why you're not there. <laughs> Where's the other one? It's like, well, he's... He'll be here any second. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I, I signed shit at a table. I did a writing workshop, which was a ton of fun. I... Uh, I did this, the same thing last year. They have like a, a creative corner up there and they're like, hey, we want you to come up and talk about TV writing. So I had an hour and the first year I just talked about like, here's how I got to be where I am. Here's my path and here's what it's like a little bit inside a writer's room. Mm -hmm. Any questions? They're like, no, because we live in the middle of nowhere, Canada and that's not accessible to us. I said, okay, that's fine. Um, but then this year I said, well, okay, if we're going to do this again, I want to make it actually what it's like inside a TV writer's room. So we broke an episode of TV. I was like, we, all of us together in this room, whether it's five of you or 50 of us, are going to break an episode of Knight Rider right now. Oh, that's pretty hot. So, and so what, you just come up with an idea for an episode of Knight Rider? Yeah. I was like, hey, like Knight Rider is a procedural. The same things have to happen every week. If I was a fucking Canadian and stumbling through this fucking con and somebody was like, yo, write a Knight Rider, <laughs> I'd be like, this is the best fucking con I've ever gone to, eh? <laughs> oh my God, that sounds magical. How many people are in the room? Uh, we started with five. Uh, by the time we ended, there was about 60 people in the room. And for a convention of 9,000 people, that's like a decent percentage. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, but yeah, because Knight Rider, a procedural is like, these things happen every week. Like if you watch a Law & Order, it's all right, somebody's getting murdered, right? Or slash uh, sex crimed. Mm. Uh, they, they're going to arrest that person and then hand it over to the lawyers and the judge and all. Like there's the five or six beats that happen in every episode. I'm like, yes. Knight Rider, he's going to meet a pretty girl who probably has a kid, because uh, they always do. Um, he's going to drive Kit on two wheels at least once. He's going to jump over something at least once. There's going to be some bad guy who wants land rights or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> There's a scene where he drives the car onto the truck and then backs back out and he kisses the girl and rides over to the sunset because Michael Knight is not about that fucking commitment shit. These things happen in every episode. So now let's just fill in the blanks. What's the bad guy want? Who's the girl? What's the relationship between them? Uh, how many kids does she have? How cute are the kids? You know, like, is there a demolition derby? Every third episode, there's a demolition derby where there's a bunch of hicks who are like, oh, we're going to get that fucking fancy-ass future car, and then they bounce off of it all the time because it's fucking kid. And just, here's how this works. Let's all do it together. Here's act one, here's act five, here's the beginning, here's the end. Here's, yes. And we did it in like 45 minutes, and we broke an episode of TV. Did and they it, have fun? I think they had a lot of fun. At least I think they did. Did anyone pitch any cool ideas? Uh... Yeah. I mean, but also, it's Knight Rider. So it was never even like, by the way, a dragon shows up. I'm like, no! Get the fuck out! And like, no, there's a... Yeah, there's dragon a, shows up, burns a chair to the ground and shit. Yeah. Like, one, one guy was like, so how old are these kids? Why? Could Michael Knight fuck one? No. <laughs> that was a Canadian question? Yeah. It's like, is one of them like 19 and like kind of hot? No. I want to do the darkest episode of Knight Rider ever, eh? If we're making pretend, let's do it. <laughs> I was like, um, and you can't have Evil Twin because that's the other thing. They, they're going to go to Evil Twin. We don't get to do the Evil Twin episode. I would have pitched uh, 
in this episode, uh, Michael takes Kit to Pep Boys for a tuna. <laughs> So it's just Michael Knight hanging out at Pep Boys going like, oh, fucking, I didn't know I wanted this air, air freshener as bad as I yeah. did. And fucking and then, buying little knickknacks and shit. And then Kit just up on the fucking lift, just being molested by the mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his hand in places Michael I've never felt before. No, like the people in the shop are talking about how they're going to screw Michael over and shit. Like, oh, we'll tell him it needs this. And the car's like, don't lie to Michael. <laughs> And they're like, holy shit, the car talks. And then they strike up a friendship with the car and whatnot, buy him a beer. And then the car is their new god, and they begin to worship the car. <laughs> like 3 p.m. Well, now you're being fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. Um, that sounded fun. That was kind yeah, of Yeah, cool. it was super fun. Uh, the most amazing thing happened while I was up there, though. Actually, on the way back from up there. Uh, so I'm on the flight back, and I'm sitting uh, in first class, because they treat you right when they fly you to the middle of nowhere. And uh, right behind me is uh, Edward James almost. Oh, fucking Commander Adama. Commander Adama, who I know... And Blade Runner. And Blade Runner, and Miami and Vice. And Stand and Deliver, yes? Yeah, totally. And Miami, Miami Vice, Vice as well, yeah. Um, who I know a little bit because he's been on the, the Battlestar Galactica. And so. Zoot Suit. And Zoot Suit. I know, that's deep, deep fucking pull. Thank you. Uh, and so he's sitting behind me, and then next to him is LeVar Burton, who was coming from Vancouver. Um, Because that's what happens in Vancouver, just people end up on the flight going back to L.A. So we get back to the airport, and and I see Eddie talking, because I now call Edward James almost Eddie, and it's super fucking weird, but I do it now. And I'm like, you really? Are you on a first name basis with him? Yeah. Like, later on, Eddie. Yeah, see you later, Eddie. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, goodbye, Mike. (laughs) All right, sir. and so he's talking to LeVar, and, uh, and I introduced myself to LeVar, because we had all kind of been in like weird proximity and kind of having a conversation, but he didn't know who I was. He's like, I'm LeVar, by the way. He's like, you know, I'm Mark, and I just wanted to tell you that like when I was 14 years old, and I was watching Star Trek The Next Generation, I can't tell you what it meant to me to see somebody who looked like me in a space I wanted to be in. Like, at that time in my life, I did not know there was room for me mm-hmm. in sort of nerd media. And I'm sure you get this a lot, but it means everything in the world to get to shake your hand. And he was like, oh, man, that's really sweet. Yeah, you're the 19th person who told me that today, but I get it. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I know. If I get a reading rainbow, I get it. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, fucking Roots. I watched Roots when I was seven. And so we're walking through the airport. Like, I do that big fucking speech at the terminal, and then we all have to walk together to baggage claim. And then it gets weird because now it's like, I bared my soul to you. Hey, there's an orange Julius here. Are you thirsty? Jordy? And so we get to the baggage claim and like his, his driver's there to pick him up and I don't get a driver because first class, yes, driver, no. So I go to the parking lot to get my car and I'm standing there waiting for the elevator. I get in the elevator and then this arm, this like giant kind of Ukrainian arm like holds it open. Fucking wharf? No. Oh. Also a black dude. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, was jo- it was Jordy's. It was LeVar's driver and LeVar comes in and he's like, Ah, you thought you were going to get rid of Kint- Kunta Kinte that easy. Not that easy, motherfucker. Kunta's on you. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> He's dropping fucking Kunta Kinte. And LeVar Burton cursed at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's, and that's also fairly deep cuts reference for LeVar Burton at as well. At this point, yeah. But like, he's still fucking Kunta Kinte yeah. and will drop a Kunta on your ass the least you expect it. Yeah, yeah. It was lovely and wonderful. And the, like, Did he give you a ride? No. No. I went to my car and he went to his chariot, I guess. <laughs> um, but it was. I thought it was like he was like, oh, you're not. Come on, get in the car. I'm did giving you, you a ride. Did you? Think but really, he was just like, oh, you're still here. Yes. Oh, good luck. Uh, <laughs> did you think this like, is Mark and I influenced him? Da da da. <laughs> da. <laughs> did you think like me and Kunta Kinte went to, like strip clubs and shit? That's after what that? I was next. You were like, I read his rainbow and we hung out all day long. <laughs> No, but it was very much the, like, if you in the world get a chance to meet that person. He's a good dude. You tell, you tell that person what you feel. True. You know, because who the fuck knows if you're ever going to be in that place at that time again. Like, if somebody in the world means something to you, tell them. Go one step further, man. Like, not even that person. Everybody. Always wear your heart on your sleeve, man. Nothing bad comes from it. Only good shit. Unless you're a kid in school. Like, I, I can see... <laughs> You wear your heart on your sleeve, they beat you up and shit. So if, yeah. if you're a kid watching this, never fucking share your feelings. Uh, no. But when you grow up, you know, fucking feel everything. It's amazing. 
Uh, I went to England and Ireland uh, and Scotland mm. to do uh, some Babylon overseas, Hollywood Babylon with Ralph. A lot of and, white people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All nice, but very white. Um, but yes, it was, it was lovely and absolutely fucking great time. Uh, but I saw Shazam while I was there. Did you? What a charming fucking movie. Did like, you think so? Yeah. yeah. Did, <laughs> did you not? <laughs> it's fine. It was cute. You no, know? It's, there's, there's parts of it that are super, super charming. Oh, my God. I had such a blast. I was not by myself, but it was a fairly empty screening. Mm. Like, you know, because it's late in the run at this point. But, uh, you know, just... Uh, steeped in comic book references. Um, and then a, a really, like I didn't see the, 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 the obvious ending coming, mm -hmm. um, but I was incredibly charmed by all that. Uh, I, yeah, I thought, it was, I thought he was wonderful. I really like Zach Levi. Like he's just, he's having the most fun. Which the other great. guy, wasn't it, Mark Strong? Mm -hmm. In a completely different movie. Oh yeah. Like in a movie where he really is an evil person. <laughs> You know, and not just a supervillain in Shazam, but yeah, like no, fucking. Like, I'm gonna spinach. fucking murder people. <laughs> yes. Like all the people. If I see you, you're dead. Like, but this is for kids. It's about family. Yeah. No, it's about death. Um, but Mr. Mind. Yeah. Wasn't that fucking dope? Oh my god. The, there was, in the beginning, you saw mm. Mr. Mind, who is the little caterpillar with the talk box around his neck and shit from the comics. So that's like one of the first things you saw is like a behind the shot in the wizard's cave. And I was like, oh my God, that's what a nice deep cuts reference that was. And then spoilers, five, four, three, two, one. He fucking shows up at the end of the movie as well. And I was like, this is the most metal movie I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. I had a good time watching that. I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> No, listen, I did not, I, I'm not going to shit on it too much. My one problem, and I think we talked about it, is that the boy who plays Billy Batson yeah. does not seem to be the same man who's played by Zach Levi. Whereas if you watch Big, you have no problem believing that Tom Hanks is playing a 10-year-old. Right. And the same 10-year-old. But in this movie, it's like, oh, you were kind of like a southern, sullen, withdrawn, fucking teenage emo kid, and now you're a dick. <laughs> like who really likes having a good time he, he turns into like weird frat superhero bro dick I'm like that's not the same kid I think that was the working title <laughs> superhero frat bro dick <laughs> and then they're like let's just go Shazam yeah like it didn't test that well <laughs> um, what else did I do while I was over there other than go to shows when I was in Manchester I had like three days where I was in Manchester and like we had great weather over there, so I got to go out shopping. What a great city, man. Like, they had this building called Affleck's Palace, which is just kind of like three stories of an indoor flea market. Mm. And, like, I love going to flea markets and shit. I love is that how he's making art. money these days? Who? Affleck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I opened a flea market it was called a, Martha's. It was ironic, man. I was, just, I was sitting there talking to people because some people were like, hey, it's fucking you. And so some people were like, Affleck's Palace, right, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I live in Affleck's Palace. <laughs> and they look at me funny, and I was like, I bought his house like almost 20 years ago. And they're like, ah, and they moved on and shit. <laughs> um, but what a great day I had walking around, just like shopping. I bought a lot of fucking like local art and stuff like that. I realized that like that's what I'm drawn to. If you draw something and hang it up and put a price tag on it, like I'm your fucking. I, I'm your so your mark. Like I'll walk right up and be like, oh my god, I have to have that drawing. I bought a drawing of a fucking stormtrooper crying. That said, uh, he was on the phone and he goes, "Those were the droids we're looking for." <laughs> my no. wife was like, "Why? What are you gonna do with that?" I was like, "I don't know, but I have to support that it exists." <laughs> so fucking nice. Noted. All right, draw a thing, fucking sign it, charge a mint for it. And I got you. You do. <laughs> so the mark. Um, and then other than that, I don't know. I've just been in post on the movie, man. We're down to 94 minutes. Wow. Which is really tight. Fucking tight as drum running time. Uh, today we did music all day uh, to kind of shore up the, the soundtrack and the score. Um, it's awesome. I've been showing it now uh, to folks at the house. Anytime you want to come over and watch, you just let me know. I mean, I've seen it, though. Did you see the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, we did that already. <laughs> That's right. We fucking, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> this is so weird. I was re-inviting you. You're like, <laughs> we did this. Um, yeah, it's it, that's kind of the mode I'm in right now. Is like, come watch the flick. Yeah. And I was like, when you were watching it, it was helpful because then I was still looking for cut notes. Mm -hmm. But now there's nothing to cut, and so we just have screenings, and it's like satisfying for me, but like it's not productive. <laughs> Um, but every once in a while, like one ends and somebody tries to give me notes and shit. And I'm like, no, we're done. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Yeah, like you hold that to the next movie. Um, but, no, but I dug it. I dug it. And I told you that. Oh, thank you. I, yeah. yeah, I wasn't even looking for that. Yeah, you did dig it. I was like, it's, it's, it's sweeter than it is funny. And yeah. it's very funny. Yeah, it's, it's, ooh, wow, it's well, we'll try to put that on the poster. There you go. It's all yours. Um, I, can, I can put a price tag on it and <laughs> put my I'll, name on it. I, I will buy it if you draw it. Um, I think that's all I got for open. I can't think of anything ever, if anything beyond that. No, I know we got news, and I just want to dive into Game of Thrones. Shall we start the we show We should proper? fucking do that then. All right, folks, man. Uh, the show is divided into two halves, and uh, the first half uh, is generally uh, us relying on Mark's origins as a news hound, as a newsman. As somebody who worked for the news and edited a bunch of news and shit to dig up the news for us. So we turned to Mark and Mark turned to the internet and so Mark brought us news. Give it up for Mark with the news. So, uh, so yeah, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Less news and more. Here's a shit thing that I watched. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I, that came out more negative than I thought yeah. shit thing that I watched was gonna. I don't know, though. You sound like the internet. Like, everybody seems rather... I, I've, I haven't yet to see anybody go, like, completely satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> End game good. <laughs> and I think that was the problem, right? Is like, um, we just saw somebody stick the landing insanely well with the ending of a series. Granted, it was a cinematic series, but... You know, 22 fucking single entries and then a big old fucking yeah. wrap up and shit. We spent about the same amount of time with the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we did Game of Thrones. And, you know, uh, the cats who were telling the Game of Thrones story were doing a really fucking great job and shit. And so I just think everyone's a little flabbergasted that it's, it's, it's come to an end and it wasn't what anyone wanted. Is that what we're looking for? Yeah, I mean, it's... I, uh, I was talking to somebody today, and I was like, the thing to realize is that Frank Sinatra never wrote a song. That was not his gift. His gift was interpreting songs. His gift was, I will take these words that are on a page, and I will make them the best version of this song you've ever seen. But I do not have the gift of inventing, I can't put one note after another and say, no, that's how that should go, and then follow it with another 500 notes. Kay. Just not my thing. I feel like when this show had the song already written for it, it fucking soared. Like once it was, no, we know exactly what to do. We can choose what to leave out. We can interpret this text the way we want to. But then they went, they had no more book. All they had, and the, and the things about the books was not the plot. It was, here's how these characters work together. How's that, here's how we weave this insanely intricate character story so that by the time you get to a thing like The Red Wedding, it is gonna hit you like a fucking ton of bricks. And the plot is almost not, like, the Red Wedding comes at the end of a season where Caitlin Stark is negotiating to cross a fucking bridge. We spent a year crossing a bridge. And the end of that is, oh, well, the only way to do this is for you, my son to pledge himself to your daughter, and then that'll be cool, and then he'll be a fucking Stark man and never do what you're supposed to do, and then it's going to go badly, and oh, everybody has to die now. Mm. But the taking that time to build all of those character pressure points yields something that amazing. And by the time they didn't have the character roadmap, what they had was a plot roadmap. What they had was George R.R. R. Martin sitting down with Benioff and Weiss and saying, here's what happens. And they're like, cool, we got it. We can stitch together this, this, this roadmap and get you where you said you wanted to end. Right. But without any of that character underpinning, it all just felt like, I mean, yeah, I could see how Danny goes nuts. You've established that she was going to go nuts, but the minute of her full-on nuts going doesn't feel like you told me that story. Mm. You know, it's never like, oh, I fully understand why she decided to burn King's Landing. You're just like, well, no, she killed Melisande the last episode, and yeah, Jorah died the episode before, so yeah, the math checks out, but it's not about math. It's not about plot. It's about I feel the way she's feeling, and I understand why she has to do a horrible thing. Aside from, oh yeah, no, we want her to be bad. 
Like, and we'll tell you she's bad because of this awesome fucking dragon wing shot behind her. We're just like, have you got it yet? Flap, flap. <laughs> just in case you missed. I, I, I like the shot. I thought it was cool, but a lot of people on the internet were like, oh my God, this is how you fucking visually tell a story. And I'm like, yeah, I guess for all the people who are like, who's the bad guy? <laughs> yeah. This is my first episode. Who's who? <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> I just came in at the end. Tell me what this is about. I, um, this is my takeaway. And I agree with you. I, I, to some degree, like it, it clearly felt like they ran out of roadmap and they were like, fuck it, we'll tell the story ourselves. And at a certain point, you were like, go back to what the guy was doing. That was good. But not so much that as, I think they should have done six and six. I think they should have done six episodes of the Night King battle and, you know, fucking Battle of Westeros, whatever they're calling it. No, Battle of Winterfell. Mm -hmm. Six episodes tying up that storyline and then go off the air for fucking year again if they have to. And then six episodes of just Danny goes nuts and what do we do? And, and the battle for the Iron Throne and shit. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, com I'm coming off of a, some fucking thing off to traveling. Um, like chest cold or head cold. Um, it just felt very rushed. Like, I, I don't, I, you know, I've, I've watched the show, so I saw the signs, and like, she was always talking about, I'm gonna take that fucking throne and fire and blood. And you're like, all right, she's, you know, gotta, <laughs> she's a Targaryen. But like, it, it just felt like the last two episodes, like things were going fairly gracefully, and then they were like, hurry the fuck up. And yeah. it was like, I mean, this is a weird metaphor, but like, is a, it was like having amazing sex and then suddenly like, oh shit, my parents are home. And you're like, fuck! And, <laughs> and so like, you know, most of it is memorable and fucking cool and shit, but the end really just fucking went weird. And I think I came, I'm not sure still, you know? Uh, apropos of, of almost nothing, I, I learned the most amazing term in the writer's room last week. Okay. Have you heard of a danger wank? Danger, danger wank? Danger wank. No. It is lotion, tissue box, pants around your ankles, porn. Mom! <laughs> so you're trying to beat mom into the room? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, uh, Danger wank. I liked my mom too much to do something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and we played that game without me even intending to, so. Hey, Never Tiger, ever. what? Yeah, oh shit, you're back. Um, Give me two seconds. But yeah, it's, it's, I'm trying to find a track to get back <laughs> onto. Um, but yeah, it's just that, that you wanted these character stories that you've been invested in for eight, nine years. What are you missing? Water. Can I get a couple bottles of water, please? Go ahead. Um, like, for the entire show, Arya has been like, here's my fucking list. I'm going to kill all the people on this list, and I'm going to be made whole. And you're like, yeah, fuck it. Okay, she's going for it. Yeah, fucking Walter Frey's on the list. The fucking Night King is on the list. I'm going to knock these bitches off, and let's keep on moving. And then in like 10 minutes, the Hound is like, you know what? Maybe you don't want to be this. Why would I not want to be this? This is what I've been about. Like, but do you have to be? Don't be like me. It's like, no, I'm going to get my revenge. You never got your revenge. That's why you're fucked up. I kill the people on my list, bitch. So I'm going to go get Cersei because that's the last name on my list. And the fact that she doesn't is like, what? Yeah, I found the death of Cersei and Jaime really unsatisfying. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that like, they kill each other or fucking... You know, she, Arya yeah. comes in and kills her at least because we were promised green eyes. You know, so it's like it's either going to be Cersei or it's going to be a Daenerys, and yeah. it was neither. Yeah, it was. Look at me, I can ninja my way around this city and see a bunch of awful things and remind you, Jon Snow, what you're supposed to do here. I mean, the, yeah, and then there's that weird like ten minute scene with the horse. <laughs> 
you know, where you're like, well, this is a mean, this, like everyone started assigning meaning to it online. They're like, fucking, she is death. And on a pale horse, she's going to ride. And she's going to be the one that kills Danny. And nothing. Like she got on the horse and fucking took off at the end of that episode. Mm -hmm. And then the next episode, when fucking they spent 20 minutes with Tyrion looking around going, wow, she really did burn everything, didn't she? All of a sudden, fucking Arya's back going, hey, I didn't go far. <laughs> well, she, she, she did a lap, just like. I guess, yeah. Um, that too was weird. I had this weird sensation, and it was actually good to watch uh, because like, it made me kind of go back into my movie and, and edit, do one more pass with this ear. I, did you watch it like this? I watched both episodes going like, these are the last two hours of this show ever. What the fuck is this about? And so like when, you know, we saw the, in the second to last, the penultimate episode, uh, her scorching fucking King's Landing and shit like that. You know, I, and we were on the ground watching motherfuckers, ah! like it just get roasted. I felt like that was, that's, that's great, man. You can't do better than that. I felt like I was there. And then the first 10 minutes of the next episode, they let Tyrion walk around and look at it. And I understand, like if we had two more seasons to go, take your time, let him take it in. But it's like, we've already seen this, bitch. Mm. Like, are you seriously gonna waste 10 minutes of the last episode of Game of Thrones letting this guy walk around and go like, she sure killed a lot of people. <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, all right, so fucking, we didn't see Jamie and, and Cersei uh, get killed, so maybe, we're gonna see him in this last episode because if Tyrion's going downstairs, maybe he's gonna find out they're not there and there's gonna be a scene of doubt. They're fucking dead! Like, and everything, like, and they let, they let him go find him and look at him and they got crushed by a ceiling yet their heads are not crushed and they look pretty as fuck. And then he weeps and there's no like, I, it was just, to me that felt like fuck man, like you only got, I kept looking at the clock going, you only got 45 minutes left to the, the rest of Game of Thrones. And you're gonna do this? So I did that quite a bit. And it made me go back into Jane Silent and Bob reboot and go, all right, view it through that prison. Like some angry fan that's like, you made me wait 20 fucking years for a sequel and this is in the movie and shit? So I went out and cut out anything remotely fucking extraneous so that like I could stand by every single word spoken and go like, yeah man, I fucking, that, that made it through the, all the way and here's why, I could justify it. I don't know that you could justify I mean, you don't have to, it's fucking art, right? But like, I sat there watching it going like, this is a lot of waste of time, man. Like, you could be telling more story, you could be doing some cool shit, as opposed to just having a guy look around. And some people be like, no, but he needs to see that in order to make the turn so he could throw his fucking pin on the ground and shit like that. But he saw it. Yeah, he was just outside the city going, oh, fuck. Everything's on fire. <laughs> yeah, the Bring bald the guy bells. was right, fuck. Like, it was just, I don't know, those are the things. I, and I'm not saying, I would have done better or fucking this is what I would have done. I was just surprised they, they kind of did some of the things they did. Yeah. Uh, well, here's what I would have done. Um, <laughs> no, I kept on feeling the entire last season, this entire run, like the conclusion that again, it's about moments and it's about feeling. And it's like, it seems as if so much of the show has been about, look how awful it is to have a fucking Iron Throne. Look how, how much chaos it's caused to have a king or a queen who rests on this Iron Throne. Mm. Destroy the throne, right? Like, okay, cool. Who's gonna do it? Well, probably Jon Snow, if he's not a pussy, is gonna kill Danny, and then have Gendry cut it up into seven pieces and give a sword to each member of a kingdom, and it's seven kingdoms again, right? Just fucking do that. It's easy. We don't need absolute power corrupts absolutely. Nobody has absolute power. We're a council of kings. Did they do that in the books or something? I don't know. I never read the books. But, <laughs> but I'm like, all right, cool. So... Who destroys the throne? A dragon. Why? Unclear. All right, fine. I guess the dragon doesn't like metal stabby things. So melt this chair, because I hate chairs. Um, and then it's, okay, so we need a new king. Why? Why do you need a new king? Like, shouldn't, if you're gonna listen to Tyrion, again, why listen to Tyrion, unclear, because he's like- Especially because that scene begins with Grey Worm going, you don't say anything else. And he's like, I won't, but hold on. <laughs> and then yeah. gives a fucking speech where they're like, the little guy's right, let's elect a new king. And they're like, what the fuck happened? I thought he was about to be put to death. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no, let's have a new king. It's like, why do we need a new king? Why? Ex somebody explain to me why this has been a good thing for anyone. Yeah. It's just like, meh. And I'll tell you what, in a world where they're picking kings and shit, 
Last choice, Bran. Like, I mean, not because I'm like, oh, he's fucking useless or I don't like his acting or anything his like that. His dick doesn't work. Yeah, or the Sansa reason. That was so strange, man. Could you imagine? Like, everyone's like, we want you to be king. And your sister's like, he's fucking dickless. And he's like, well, technically, that's not true, man. I got the dick of a three-eyed raven. I can see a future. Um, I just don't understand, because I remember that boy specifically saying, uh, I can't be lord of anything. I'm the three-eyed raven. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, but you didn't say king. And so now he's fucking yeah. king. And also, like, if the metric for choosing the king is who's got the best story, Bran wasn't even in all of this fucking story. He vanishes in, like, season four. It's like, what are you doing? Being dragged around the fucking woods for a while by this lady who we've never mentioned again. Like, That's how, right, and she lived, didn't and she? And she lived. So they so could like, have brought her back. How about your fucking badass sisters? Like, one of which was an 11-year-old who watched her head, their dad's head get cut off and travels the fucking realms and becomes the most feared assassin in the world. That's a good story. What about your other sister who's been, like, brutalized by a bunch of dudes, which the show takes a little bit too much relish in, but whatever, who, like, overcomes, like, vast and awful spousal abuse to become the queen of winter... Like... She's got a fucking great story. That I, guy I honestly felt like we were being set up for, you know, the old King Conan story. Like, essentially, Jon Snow is like, oh, it's mine, but I don't want it. Fuck yeah. this. But the idea is like, well, it's yours, and whether you want it or not, heavy is the head that wears the crown. So in a world where he ices Daenerys, I fully expected he's, like, going to be the sad king who ruled wisely, right. but fuck, he was emo. He's the King Morrissey and shit like that. <laughs> but... um but then all of a sudden, he goes to yeah. jail again, kind right. of. Or, and they, they drop the entire, oh, you're the last Targaryen, you have the, the right to fucking rule. But you're like, all right, John, you're the fucking king. We don't give a shit that you killed the queen because your claim to the throne was better, so bully on you. What do you want to do? I want to abolish the Iron Throne and all kings. I'm going to go live in the fucking north. Peace out, y'all. Like, let him do it. Let him break the wheel, which isn't who's got a dick and can have children. It's this fucking awful system of government. Like, break the wheel. <laughs> but they didn't do that, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> and how, it, I'm, that was her thing. She wanted to break the wheel. Yeah, it was Danny's thing. And that whole thing was, like, we got to fucking break the wheel of slavery and tyranny and, like, you, you, everybody in Slaver's Bay, like, my whole fucking campaign speech was, I'm going to break the fucking wheel. Like, great. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, the whole thing was pretty good for the Stark family. Like, yeah. when you consider the show begins with the Stark family and then ends with the Stark family, in the beginning it starts with like, yeah, oh shit, they killed our dad and mm. called him a traitor and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. now one of them's Queen in the North and one of them is Dora the Explorer and one of them is, <laughs> one of them's a fucking the king-eyed, three-eyed raven. Yeah, the Stark, and one of them is, you know, the king be on the wall if he wants to be. That was the other thing. Like, Grey Worm's like, he's got to go to jail forever. And they're like, we're going to send him to the fucking wall again and shit. And first off, I'm like, did you see that shot of the repaired wall? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> like, who did that? <laughs> like, they were all off fighting the fucking king of the night and shit. You mean they left behind a regiment to be like, you guys, fix this fucking wall. Yeah. Well, it's totally. like you shitting me an ice dragon fucking blew it apart and shit. They're like, I don't care. A few pipes will do it. And that's what they did. They showed this one shot where it's like, come on. But once you repair the wall, who are you fucking walling yeah, up? There's anymore? no more White Walkers. That's it. It's like once they've fucking done with the King of the Night and shit, it's like, take the whole fucking wall down, man. Yeah. Like, uh, that I didn't understand. And then they send him back there, and it's, you know, you're going to be a fucking, uh, you're going to take the oath or the black and live at Castle Black, you know, the same way the show is beginning. But then they have a shot where he just fucks off yeah, from Castle fuck Black and he's like, was Grey Worm gone? Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> and then just goes into the deep woods and shit. So yeah. what's that meant to be? Does he become the king of the fucking Wild way wings. north? or <laughs> Super north? And is deep he north? no longer a, like in Castle Black? Or what he, do they call that shit? Your yeah. crow when they... Yeah, I mean, he, he, he starts a brewery in the, in the far, far north. And that's it. That's his story. Oh, I was going to ask, did you read the books? <laughs> you said you didn't read the books. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like we were being told a different story, and then at the very end, they're like, uh, P.S., this has always been about Bran. And you're like, what? Yeah. But, uh, and like, you just want the moments, right? Like, the thing you take away from a finale of a show is the moments with the characters that you've ridden with, 
that seem to, at the very least, if not validate your decision to ride, at least have made it a little bit worthwhile. Right. Like, after Brienne's weird bullshit pining over Jamie is like, don't leave, I'm gonna cry for you. And she gets to go write his story in the fucking, the, the annals of the leaders of the Kingsguard. Right. Turn the fucking page. Sir Brienne of Tarth. Like, you know, first of her name is the new fucking leader of the Kingsguard. Yeah. Also, cool. maybe pregnant with Jamie's child. But just like something I to rec- of that. That would have been cool. To either recognize the years of her service and where the, the depth of her story and the here's a little bit of throw forward like going on, like there is one more Lannister in the world. Or at least threw some shit, throw some shade on the pages, like had a small dick. <laughs> <laughs> had a golden dick. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm certainly not complaining in terms of like, you know, look, this is what they should have done or anything like that. I, you know, still, there was shit that I liked. I liked her fucking speech when she was like, now we're going to Winterfell. I was like, fuck yeah, I'll watch that show. Mm. Like, go, go fight, go do the same shit you did here, there. Like, start wars everywhere and shit. Um, because ultimately, I mean, where do you stand on her roasting people? I mean, I think that if, if, if the scene that you had gotten was the bells are ringing, she's, she's battered through the walls, all the scorpions are down, and like, her armies are on the field, and she's perched overlooking King's Landing, and she's about to fucking, like, all right, it's cool, I got it, it's done. And one of those soldiers kills Grey Worm. Like, one of those soldiers, one of the Lannister army men, like, everybody else is surrendering, and one fucking dude kills the last attachment she has to the world. I buy that as a trigger to, like, I was on the edge. Like, I was keeping it in check. Yeah. And that happens, fuck everybody. I buy that. Like, it's, you know, it's the, it's the Pulp Fiction. Like, he killed a guy over a foot massage? Extreme, but I understand it. Mm. You know, like, oh, no, it's an overreaction, but the validity of the reaction is there. Right. But just her, like, I'm crazy now, is the least interesting version of what that character is. Um, I, didn't, I didn't mind it so much. I wasn't like, you know, oh, this is a complete betrayal of the character and all this. Is, I mean, and maybe that says something about my personality, but I was like, fucking good. They're all pricks. <laughs> like, you know, they Even killed the their women friend. and children. Well, I mean, no. That's the thing. Like, they, they went to such pains to show you, like, the corpses of children. Like, well, yeah. they didn't shoot down a dragon. True. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's that. I don't know. It's been a fickle fucking city, right? Like, one minute they're like, fuck you, Cersei. Shame, shame. And then they're like, protect us, Cersei. So I, that's why she had felt, like, indifference to them. I thought it was kind of hot, though, when she was at the window and fucking Daenerys is, like, just smoking fools. And, like, for the first time ever, Cersei's like, oh, no. Like, you know, she didn't see this coming. She was like, oh, let's see her fucking kill women and children to get to me, the breaker of chains. And she's like, oh shit, she's doing it. I that would have been more satisfying if like at one point they showed the dragon, the Drogon or whatever with Daenerys like coming. It looked like she was coming at Cersei, but never did. Yeah, like do one, that. Yeah, do that. Like more so than like roast everybody else. I, I do think though that the winner of the Game of Thrones is Lena Headey who managed to get a million dollars for every episode of the last two seasons where all she did was sit at a window and drink wine. True. Like, do I gotta do anything? No, 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 <laughs> just look imperious, get awesome clothes and just sip wine. Great, cash the fucking check. Yeah, really. And she, I think she had in this final season about 12 lines total. Mm-hmm. Nice work if you can get it. Yeah. Um, what, what is your favorite, if you can think of it, series finale? Um, I mean, I, it's not my favorite, but it, Veep just finished, and I thought they finished very well. Mm. It, like, it stuck their landing incredibly well. There was a beat in it where I was like, no, but in retrospect, it, that too was very on point, on brand, and in character for what they did. Um, so they, they ended really well. Um, you know, Seinfeld, I remember being like, what? Um, but not like angry or anything. What's my favorite? Um, it's not my favorite, but I remember they ended Facts of Life well. We've learned all the facts. 
Um, I don't, I'm trying to think. You got one? Uh, I, am, I am very partial to Angel, the Angel season finale. I don't know what Damn. <laughs> what did Angel do to you? <laughs> uh, because it ends, like the, the entire last season was also a bit abbreviated. They were supposed to have a 22-episode run. They ended up with 10, mm -hmm. and they did accelerate the storytelling, but it ends with... Angel and like his two buddies, cohorts, you know, soldiers at arms, standing in an alleyway, it's raining, and there's a fucking dragon coming down the alley, and there's an army of demons on one side and an army of something else on the other side, and it's literally just, all right, you take the army on the left, you take the army on the right, I'm gonna take the dragon, and it's, it ends with them in battle. Like it's, this is a character who, this is all he does, is he fights the fights that need fighting, and so ending with him, in the middle of engaging in a fight he can't possibly win, felt appropriate to what that character was and that story that he was, like he's a hero, and this is what heroes do. Like I bought that, and it ended in such a way that no, I feel, excuse me, uh, what the character feels, and I feel what he's supposed to be feeling in this moment. Like that's what I want. It's emotional resolution. I could give a fuck about plot resolution. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care that much about the 98 plots that they left hanging in Game of Thrones. Like, I just want to feel as if these characters are where their story should have taken them. Battlestar Galactica had a good ending. Yeah, except for Angels. But that was a whole season thing. Yeah, it was yeah. just they decided it was going to be divine. And I'm like, I oh, don't, sure, because angels. The Starbuck thing? The Starbuck thing. Yeah, that was always, that's a little tough to explain. But the final episode I thought was. Yeah, because it gives you, it, it is an episode of Battlestar Galactica that gives you the things you've come to expect from an episode of Battlestar Galactica. Like giant fucking space fights, mm. weird philosophical musings, um, a crazy ass flash forward, and a cameo from the creator. And it's like, yeah, all right, cool, I'll take it. The, uh, who's the cameo from the creator? Uh, the very last scene is of uh, Six and Baltar walking down a street in midtown Manhattan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they pass by a, a, a newsstand, and Ronald Moore is reading a newspaper at that newsstand. Is that right? Yeah. I forgot about that last shot. Um, Spoilers, I'm sorry. <laughs> did, I, did I fuck up Battlestar for anybody? It's not the series finale, but uh, this I just watched uh, both Flash had a really good season finale. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Um, nope. They did a season of uh, his, him and his kid. Oh. Him and Iris and their kid from the future. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like a villain, right? No. No? She was, it was all about how she was... I'm going to cry just thinking about it. It was all about her trying to you know, like be a... <laughs> A hero. <laughs> My God, that shit really does it for me. Um, it, was, uh, it was really well done and uh, bittersweet because mm. they couldn't, you know, keep the, the, uh, the character. I, I don't want to spoil it, but it was incredibly fucking well done. Heartbreaking. Um, and then Supergirl just finished up last week and John Cryer was Lex mm. Luthor. Fantastic. Yeah? Yeah, like I, with all due respect to Gene... Hackman, he may be the best live action Lex Luthor we've ever had. Closest wow. to the guy in the comics. Somewhere Michael Rosenblum is just like, fuck you, kid. <laughs> Fair enough. It. He had a lot more time to play the character. <laughs> but Cryer really fucking embodied like the bad Lex Luthor, the, the, the adult evil Lex Luthor. Um, it was good, man. They did some good shit with their storyline. But, you know, it's easy to finish, a, not easy, but easier to finish a season. Right. than it is to finish the series. Pressure. Yeah, because they're like, hey man, if you don't like it, there's another season on its way. But with like something like Game of Thrones, it's like, this is it. If you don't like it, you're fucked forever. Yes, until the prequel. Is that what's next? Yeah, they're shooting the pilot for the prequel, which I think takes place thousands of years before this June. Oh, that'll be satisfying. <laughs> um, here's, my, uh, here's my question. There's uh, something that's been rolling around the internet, and I don't know how people would know this, but they were like, this could have been a longer fucking season, uh, but these guys, the writers, wanted to go off and do fucking Star Wars, and that's why this season is as truncated as it is. Have you read that? Is that true? Is why, why are people saying that? Uh, How do they know that? It is true that Benioff and Weiss... Are doing Star Wars. They're doing Star Wars. And it's true that Benioff and Weiss were the ones who decided to end it where they did and how they did, because HBO would have done nine more seasons of this. They would have been happy to fucking have it. 
But Benioff and Weiss were like, no, I think this is the end of our story. This is, this is the end of our road. And HBO was like, okay with that? I mean, they can't do that show without them at Why? this point. The actors, I think, would have revolted. I think the actors were the <laughs> final. Yeah, man, everyone's loyal until they're like. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, Benioff and what? Well, I mean, like, I think that one of the big reasons that... <laughs> that uh, I just stopped at the bank before I got it. Yes. <laughs> my wife asked me to pick up a bunch of money. One of the reasons why, why Gunn comes back for Guardians 3 is because that cast stood with him. Dave Bautista especially was like, I'm not coming back if it's not for him. Zoe Saldana was like, I'm not coming back if not for him. That's not true. They didn't say that. Dave Batista came closest, but none of them said. All of them were like, we love James and we stand behind him. And that's all we'll say. <laughs> nobody said, I ain't coming back if you don't come back. I, 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 Unless you know something nobody else does. I believe that part of that negotiation, part of that like, sort of year-long distance between him getting fired and him coming back was them realizing, fuck, we might get one, we might get two, we might get the ones who are the brokest, but there's some of these we're just not getting back. I, I, I admire your childlike innocence. <laughs> I, I'm dewy. Dewy with wonder. Uh, but who knows? I wasn't in a room, so I don't fucking know. But if I had to guess, no way. But it never got there anyway. Never so got there. It, it won't matter. Um, I think it's, it's pressure that helps. And yeah. I think that, you know, HBO's like, yeah, these motherfuckers won a dozen Emmys for us, and they delivered the biggest show we've ever had. If they want to go out, if they're not, if they wouldn't be happy doing this show anymore, no matter how much we pay them, then, all right. Hire someone else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure George R. R. Martin would have been like, I'll take over. <sighs> Maybe. We would stop him from writing the book. I, I find that strange. <laughs> <laughs> I find it strange, man, that they were like, well, the writers don't want to go on, so fuck it, we won't go on. When it's such a cash cow. Like, I'm curious how many people dropped HBO or cut the cord, like, the night after, or the day it was done. That is why they, they rushed to get a fucking Westworld trailer in front of it and ended it with a Watchmen trailer. Yeah, to like, be like, we got other shows! Yeah, no, we swear, you're gonna love us. <laughs> we still love over. you, nerds. <laughs> like Please. Game of Thrones? How about this shit? Yeah. Like, how about a little peek into a show you won't get for 18 fucking months? What show's that? Westworld. In 2020, that show's not coming back until... They, gave, they had the temerity to show a trailer for a show that ain't coming on for like... Yeah. They might as well be fucking put up a trailer for like the end of the world and be like, one day. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep subscribing. Yeah. Soon. Um, they do have a pretty strong lineup, though. As I was watching, like, because they did inundate you at the top and bottom of every mm. piece of programming for the last month with like, there's other shit. They're, they're, they'll be fine. Like, I, you know, I don't know that they're going to be fine as they were with Game of Thrones, but they've, they've, HBO's always had a bunch of interesting stuff. Although, the, like, that fucking, did you see was the, the Polar Bear show they're doing? Uh, His Dark Materials. Is that, like, didn't we? There was a movie. Yes! Wasn't there a, <laughs> some fucking Polar Bear movie with Nicole Kidman in uh -huh. it? And James Bond? Yeah. That's the same shit. Same shit. Is this... A reboot of that, or are uh, they, they going just, like they just went back to the source material and readapted it? But we're not supposed to think about the the they Daniel Craig. They're praying to God you don't think about that originally. <laughs> All right, so like I was sitting there going like, Jesus, how many of these fucking polar bear stories did they got out there? <laughs> but apparently it's the same fucking one. Same one. Do you think that does any business? I think it does. I Why? Think, I think Do you those, know that stuff? I don't, I don't know very books. well, but I remember those books were huge when they first came out. Like there was still a legit following for it, and. I think fantasy, if you do it at a high level mm -hmm. and you execute it well, there's always going to be an audience for it. Right. And if there's an underpinning of a book beneath it, then not to say that that's the only reason you would watch it, but I see them rolling the dice for it. Like, hey, there's an audience who knows this shit, who likes this shit, and didn't like the last adaptation of it. Let's give them the thing that they've always wanted. Mm. And hope that other people are like, this is interesting. Right. Even okay, hey, cool. It. That's, uh, what, that's what I was with fucking Game of Thrones. Was like I'd never read the books. True, but too. oh shit, I like dragons and swords and magic and boobs. Why would I not watch this? I believe that was the working title: Dragons and Swords and Magic and Boobs. I have I have the poster next to my <laughs> <laughs> Revenge of the Jedi poster. <laughs> that's good. Um, all right, uh, what else we got? Uh, I went to the movies. Uh, I, 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 saw, I saw John Wick three. Oh, did you? I did. Um, Are I, you a Wick fan? I enjoyed John Wick a lot, especially because it's predicated on like 
you know, I'm gonna kill all these fuckers because they hurt my dog. Mm -hmm. um, and if I remember correctly, spoilers, they did more than hurt the dog, didn't they? They did, yes. Yeah. There's blood on the tile. Does he get another dog at the end of that movie? Yes. He does, right? I mean, again, I'm like, I'm not the world's biggest fan, but I remember enjoying the shit out of that movie and being like, who fucking knew a movie with a born ass name like John Wick <laughs> could be this fucking good? Like, you know, yeah. what a simple package, but my God. But not enough for me to see John Wick 2. That happened already, right? It happened already. Um, and, and I wasn't against it. I just never caught up to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen them all Did now. they kill his dog again? They did not kill his dog again. This time they killed his cat. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife gave me that guinea pig. You sons of bitches. <laughs> Why do you keep killing my pets? <laughs> um, How was this? Uh, this? This one was the best action movie I had ever seen for the first 45 minutes. Ooh. The, fir the first Put that on a poster. are amazing. They're phenomenal. I mean, it's, it has all of like the precision and inventiveness and humor and playfulness of a, of a great Jackie Chan movie. Ooh. And like those like mid-period Jackie Chan is the best action that's ever been. Okay. Um, but then what happens is it's still that for the rest of the movie, which is it's a movie that teaches you how to be desensitized to it while watching it. You know, like, because if you see John Wick get thrown through the 98th fucking glass door, you're like, all right, I guess. Like, yeah, get back up, punch another dude. Sure, get more bullets. Let's shoot 58 more guys. But the first movie works because it's a revenge thriller. Right. Because it's, you killed my dog. The dog was the avatar for my love of my wife. And my wife sent me this dog as her last living act on earth to teach me to love again. And you killed the thing that I was supposed to teach me to love again. And for that... Everybody fucking dies. That's a great way to fucking describe John Wick, man. You know, evocative and, as hell. And like, but once he completes that circle, like in the second movie, it's like I got to get my car back because my car had the last picture picture of my wife in the glove compartment, and so I got to get that fucking picture. Was that the plot of two? That's that's. But he also gets the car in the first ten minutes, and then it's like, then it's I can't get back out. Like once I walked into this world again, they won't let me leave. Right. He's got a marker. It becomes a whole like I have to turn in some like fancy Italian dude in really thin suits. So like I have this marker for you. You have to come back to work for me. And he's like I don't wanna. You have no choice, John Wick. And so he fucking does it and kills 500 Don't people. you understand? They killed my dog. And I dealt with that. I just want to <laughs> heal again. And not heal like a dog would heal, because that hurts. Right. And so at the end of the second movie, it's uh, John Wick does the unthinkable, which is he kills a dude on the Continental Grounds in that hotel uh, that's run by Ian McShane, who, again, will watch in anything. This, and no, you weren't allowed to kill people there? The Continental is sacrosanct. It's did they, did, for the first two movies, nobody got killed there? Nobody got killed. There, there's a whole fucking, well, not true. One guy gets killed there, and the lady who gets killed becomes the target of every other fucking assassin in New York because she broke the rules of the Continental. She's now excommunicado, which is like fancy Italian for everybody fucking kill that person. And, uh, and so that's what happens. At the end of the second movie, he kills the dude who brings him the marker the fancy Italian dude, um, who's like, I'm never going to let you go, John Wick. You're going to do everything I ever needed you to do, including like iron my fucking shirts and then kill the person who made me the shirts. And so he kills that guy. And then it's John Wick is excommunicado. Price on his head is $14 million. And now the entire world wants to kill John Wick. The third movie is, uh, can I make them stop killing me? Who do I have to talk to about that? <laughs> and then it's like, I'm going to take a plane to Casablanca uh, or Fez or someplace like kind of vaguely Euro Middle Eastern mm -hmm. and talk to the world's first assassin who will say, you have to cut off your finger and rededicate your like, blah, 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 blah. Like there's no more. Who played the world's first assassin? Uh, Saeed Tagmagui, I think. I've butchered that name, I'm sure. Um, it sounded like a good thing for like Nick Cage to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, like Nick Cage versus Keanu Reeves would be a good scene. Right? Be like um, a modern day De Niro Pacino heat thing. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, but Have they the, ever worked together before? Uh, Keanu Reeves and Nick Cage? Yeah. They haven't. <laughs> I think we got a can sale on Pretty our hands. Much. Just go over there and say those two names and have people be like, you're right. We don't even need to tell them. It's like, guys, we sold a movie with you in it. What do we do? 
We'll get them. I don't know. Um, um, but so you know, what this movie is missing is that emotional, that pure, simple emotional pull of they killed the, the totem of my wife and now everybody needs to die. Without that, it's just violence. And it's artful violence. It's like the best executed violence you've ever seen. Mm. But it becomes like a music video by the end of it. And you're like, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's cool to look at. Benioff and Weiss said that in one of those after Game of Thrones things. I guess the, well, maybe it was the Battle of Winterfell episode or whatever, but they were just like, you can't just fight for like an hour, it gets boring and shit. And at first I was like, fuck you, you're wrong. But then I was like, no, they're right. Like, it would get yeah. fucking like boring. You gotta stop to breathe and have a character moment, otherwise it, you just kind of get desensitized. Sounds yeah. like you got inured by. I know, but and so did the audience. Like the audience I saw it on like opening night and like the first 40 minutes, there's applause. Like there's hooting and hollering. There's like, we are here for a fucking good time. Mm. And by the end of the movie, after like the fourth boss fight, Everybody's just kind of quiet and no kill another dog. <laughs> just get it done. We gotta reinvest. So yeah, like I, I I love Keanu Reeves in those movies. I like those movies. I just feel like they need to find that other reason for me to care about those movies. They better find it quick. They announced they're making a four already. Hell yeah! It and it dethroned Avengers. Did it really? It did. It made like fifty-two million dollars domestic, which was enough. And, and Avengers made how much so far? Uh, 2.6 billion worldwide. Yeah, so John Wick really dethroned Avengers. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw Avengers for a fourth time. Did you really? I did. And? Uh, and I don't say that in a way of like, how could you? Yeah, just, what's your fucking problem? When dude? did you find the time? Uh, I just carved out three hours that I didn't need for anything else. I almost did that when I was overseas, but instead I went to see Shazam. I, I literally went to go see Avengers, and then I saw that Shazam was playing, and I was like, you know, I should, I have, I've seen Avengers already twice, I should go see Shazam. And I was not unhappy with my decision. Plus I had another hour and a half to myself afterwards. <laughs> uh, all the emotional stuff still lands. Does you know, it? it? It does. Of course. Um, the thing that I realized was that uh, Endgame is the perfect way to introduce mutants to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Do tell. Uh, according to uh, the Hulk, Smart Hulk, um, the energy of the Infinity Stones is mostly gamma, gamma radiation. Uh, that the Infinity Gauntlet has been snapped three times on Earth, releasing an ungodly amount of gamma radiation. Like, I wonder what happens to genes when they're exposed to an ungodly amount of gamma radiation two and oh, three times. Oh, that's where we get mutants. So I think, like, if you, if you wanted to bring them in, that is, that is as good a way as any. To be like, oh, shit, remember the giant waves of awful shit? That's true, because there's been no mutants in the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet, or not right. even a... Yeah, I mean, they kept on calling Scarlet Witch and enhanced who, who? Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. They were like enhanced. But they're not mutants, right? Like she yeah. was given her powers through scientific, both of them right. were scientifically experimented. Right, them. also because they couldn't say the word mutants. Right. <laughs> but in, in real Marvel canon, they were mutants. Right. But I guess you're right. So they don't need to even play the card of like, hey, they've been here for the last 10 years, nobody said anything. Right. They could literally be like, this happened since the fucking snap. Ooh, that's smart. Yeah. And it's like, that's how they're gonna recast everybody because those people weren't mutants played by those people before. So you need an entirely new wave of people who was like, yeah, no, 14 years later, after in phase five, you say, oh yeah, I was born on such and such a day. And on that day. And they trace it back and they're like, that yeah. was the day of the third snap. Yeah. And everybody who was born that day is a mutant. Um, what's your favorite part of the movie, fourth time out? It's fucking, it's still the fucking hammer. It's, it's Cap holding the hammer. Like it's still, it's, it's again, the thing you didn't know you wanted, but once you get it. That, that's, that was my ultimate disappointment with the Game of Thrones finale, is that nothing happened that I thought I wanted, or nothing happened that once I got it was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, that's better than I hoped. Yeah, like that's the Night King, that's killing the Night King. Like I didn't know this was gonna happen, but oh fuck. Thank you, Arya, for not being a pussy. <laughs> um, all right, wait. So that we did. Are we done talking about John Wick? I think so. Let's talk about the news. Uh, so hey, uh, it seems as if we have a new Batman. That's the news that I wanted to get to. 
Um, you don't say. <laughs> we used to talk about Batman quite a bit on this show, but uh, we don't do it that much anymore. But now we can because they're about to make a new movie. They're about to make a new movie. Uh, the the scuttlebutt, <coughs> like the tail end of last week, was that uh, Matt Reeves, who's writ writing and directing um, the Batman. This is the gentleman that gave us two of the of the Planet of the Apes movies. Correct. The two last Planet of the Apes mm -hmm. movies. He didn't do the third, the, all three. He didn't do the first one. Right. Right. Uh, so he's making the Batman, and uh, and and it's supposed to be gritty, sort of noir. Like he wants a younger Bruce Wayne, and so the two names that were floated were Nicholas Holt who was Beast in the, the sort of post-X-Men First Class movies, and was uh, Nux, was that his name, in, in Fury Road? Um, oh, shh. Yeah, yeah. I Wasn't he also been... about a boy? He was about a boy. <laughs> They're right. talking about about a boy is about a bat? <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, he's in that movie Tolkien right now. He's in the movie Tolkien. Which he's Tolkien, yeah. He's Tolkien, which uh, I think five people saw. It's huge over in England. I don't know. Is huge, it really? It's, it's on the side of every bus, like Tolkien. <laughs> like, we got one! Yeah. Um, we know this guy. But yeah, according to JC, the per screen average for Tolkien in the States was like 50 bucks. <laughs> They're like, and we like his books, that's where it ends. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to know his story, we just want the thing. Um, so yeah, so it was Nicholas Holt and, uh, and Robert Pattinson. Which, <laughs> it sounds like it is Robert Pattinson. It sounds like it's Robert Pattinson. By all reports, uh, he's the guy that won yeah. the role. Uh, um, the right. internet either like lost its collective mind, or was like, "Yeah, all right, I see it." So same old, same old. Same old, same old. You know, the internet doing what the internet does. Um, it'd be nice if the internet just wants to surprise us all by being like, "You know what? Good." Yeah, we like that. Yeah, Rob Pattinson makes sense. Moving on. Like, but <laughs> of course, that was never going to happen. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. I think the dude's a good actor. Like, and a lot of people are like, fuck you, Twilight, and vampires that sparkle. But uh, A, he acts in those movies, but B, more importantly, since those movies, he's done a lot of, fuck ton of acting, yeah. man. He's in this movie, came out of Cannes, called The Lighthouse, which is getting blown the shit out of over mm -hmm. there. People fucking love it. There's that Cronenberg uh, movie where he sits in a car the whole yeah. time. Cosmopolis. Cosmopolis, which like, you know, sounds kind of goofy, but if you can carry, that's a one man show more or less, and he mm -hmm. carries that whole fucking movie. I think he's a really good actor, and, and I don't know, like, you can't even use the physical argument, like whether or not he's big enough to be Batman. Michael Keaton was Batman once. Yeah. Like, you know, you can put a sculpted <laughs> suit on a guy and shit. And there's nothing wrong with lanky Batman either, you mm -hmm. know, at the end of the day. But I, I, I'm curious, I think it's, I, it did not turn me off in, my, in one iota. It, in fact, it probably made me more interested. I was like, oh, look yeah. at this. I mean, it's one of those, like, he did that thing where he got a giant fucking franchise. Two, if you're gonna be honest, he's also in Harry Potter. Yeah, but, that's right. But, like, he got his fucking giant, the thing that I never have to work again if I don't want to, thing. Yeah. And then decided to work again and made really interesting choices. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go I work. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm going to go work with directors that, you know, really intrigue me. I'm going to do weird fucking offbeat movies just because they tickle me. Because I don't give a fuck if they make any money because I don't need any money. I just want to go off and, and get better at this thing that I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm. Like, why couldn't that dude be good at Batman? Why couldn't, like... The weird kind of mopey, th on the exterior impression, kind of shallow pretty boy, also be playing a dude who on the exterior is kind of a shallow pretty boy, who's got deep fucking tortured soul inside and does fucked up stuff at night. I, I buy that guy as that guy, because he's kind of that guy. Right. I, I think I'm Team Edward on this. I'm the guy. <laughs> I'm ready to see this happen. I'm, look, I'm ready for another Batman movie, so just cast somebody and get fucking to it, man. Like, it's been too long at this point. Yeah. Uh, and we get that movie June 25th, 2021. Are you shitting me? They announced it? Yeah. 2021. 2021. And we're 20... We're not 19. even June 2019 yet. That's two fucking years away? <laughs> Pieces of shit. <laughs> What do they got planned for us between now and then? You got a Wonder Woman movie happens between then? Yes. Joker, Joker movie coming? Fry. We won't get Aquaman 2 by then. You'll get I, Birds of Prey? You'll get Birds of Prey. Right. Yeah, there's enough. There's enough going on. Um, and the, the two rumored villains, if not more than two. Clayface and... Uh, hold on, who would I like to see? Uh, fucking Onomatopoeia, but that's personal. Uh, Clayface... And a classic Batman villain that they've not done yet, who would be amazing. They're doing Black Mask in Birds of Prey, right? Mm -hmm. That's who uh, 
Ewan McGregor's playing. Man, who said Man Bat? That's why I hired Nate. Man Bat. Zaz is good, but they've done Zaz, right? Like he was in uh, one of the Dark Knight movies, one of the Nolan mm -hmm. movies. Um, did they do Zaz in Gotham as well? Has anybody done Man Bat other than the cartoon? That was a great episode. I wonder if their fear of Man Bat is they're like, I don't know, that seems a little fake, but it's like, the rest of it seems fake too. <laughs> like, just, just buy in, go, they'll go the distance. Man Bat would be kind of cool, and Clayface would be amazing, but those are two of the most outlandish Batman villains. And not mm -hmm. outlandish, like, I'm a clown who kills people. Like, that's kind of doable, right? Like, that happened in the yeah. real world with John Wayne Gacy. But like, you never heard of like, there's a guy who turned himself into a giant fucking bat and shit. And you never heard of like, there's a guy who like, can morph into other things. Like, those are stretches. So I can see why they haven't touched those yet. Who is it? Uh, the rumor is it's going to be Catwoman and Penguin. <laughs> I mean, like, he's got such a rich rogues gallery, and they're like, let's do, I don't know, Joker, Penguin, Catwoman. <laughs> Joker, Penguin, Catwoman. Over and over again. They just did fucking Penguin on that Gotham show, didn't they? Uh, allegedly, apparently, reportedly. <laughs> They did all of them. Did yeah. they do Clayface and Man Bat? No. So, you picked it. I'm just saying, we're on to something here. Um, I mean, the, the, the... I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see it, I'm in. But it's just like, fucking Catwoman again? We've seen a few Catwoman. And do they really think that's the only, like, Batman villain that mainstream America, like, cares about? Like, like oh, this is the Batman villain your grandma knows. Like. There's way more than, than that. And then what was the other one? Penguin. Penguin. Like they, we've gotten the Danny DeVito iteration now, and the Burgess Meredith in the beginning, and now we've gotten the current, what was his name, Robin Lord Taylor? Is that yeah. same? Iteration. Seems like we're coming right off of that. I don't know. I'm, I, I would go with villains that nobody's seen before. I mean, the, the, one, the one reason why I'm not as unhappy about Penguin, Kay. I think, as you are, is because, A, it's been since Danny DeVito, since anybody's seen one in a movie. Right, you know, you have yeah, to have watched Gotham to know. Yeah. But the, the great thing about Penguin, and Catwoman to a lesser degree, is that he wires directly into who Bruce Wayne is. Like, every, every great Batman villain is a funhouse mirror version of who Bruce Wayne is. And so it's, the Joker is all about chaos, and Batman's all about order. And, you know, uh, Mr. Freeze is all about fucking science, as is he. Two-Face is all about justice and fucking warped, twisted justice, and so is he. And Penguin is all about a child of privilege who decides which way to take that privilege and who uses it the right way and who uses it the wrong way and who is forgotten by the city and who's remembered by the city. And I think that like, at the very least it becomes a story of duality and becomes a story of the road less taken or the, or the, the mirror cracked and cracked badly. I like that. You just made me like Penguin a little bit more, where I'm like, ooh, that's good, man. They're both rich boys and shit. They're both rich boys who didn't, you know, weren't loved by their parents one because their parents were gone, the other because he was a monster. Yeah. And whether that monstrosity is physical or just emotional, you can still play both of those. And so they can both be fucking handsome devils of Gotham City, but one of them is so scarred on the inside that he can't see the pretty boy anymore. Um, where do you stand on like uh, Tim Burton Penguin with like I got flippers and shit like that? Uh, I would rather not. Yeah, like you don't, <laughs> you really don't need that, especially in this day and age. It'd be a weird message to send. Uh, yeah, it's like yeah. I mean, there's there's so many different ways that you can get there that you don't need fucking. Does he even need to be fat anymore? I don't think so. Right? Yeah. Like the Robin Lord Taylor performance wasn't about being heavy. Yeah, it would be nice. But I, but I think there's a way to even play like body dysmorphia. Like here's a person who grew up and that is his, his core insanity is he does not see himself the way he actually is in the world. Ooh. So if you look at the mirror and you see the like fucking the child that nobody was ever happy with and the manifestation of that is you're ugly, you're fat, you're never good enough, you're never thin enough, you're never rich enough, you're never enough to be loved by the people who should love you and that is the you that you grew up to be. Like, yeah, I see myself as a giant fucking lard ass, but I'm actually Christian Bale, which would be awesome. Could you imagine? <laughs> He's like, last time I played Batman, now I'm the Penguin. <laughs> Give me an Oscar. 
<laughs> um, wow, man, fucking that. But, so wait, in your version, would he be like a thin dude, but when he looked in the mirror, he'd be like a heavy dude looking back at him and shit? I think so. That's interesting, but I bet you a lot of people would be like, fuck you! Like, give me the fat penguin. That's what I grew up on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, again, I'm sure he'll do a great job with the material, but fuck, man, like those guys again? Yeah. Or give me the give me the Mr. Freeze. Give me the give me the Victor Freeze story. Yeah, because they've Rice. done it once, but like it was Arnold. Yeah. But just, like, do the Paul Dini's. Yeah, like just reclaim that character and make him tragic and wonderful and awesome. Yeah, and that's like visually interesting, you know, the Freeze gun and all mm -hmm. that shit. And Christoph Waltz could be him. Well done. Um, all right, so I'm in for this Batman movie, but apparently got a two-year fucking wait. <laughs> uh, but we got a lot of things to see between now and then. How many Marvel movies will happen in that time? I don't even fucking know. Like, I don't remember what's on the, the runway. Well, I mean, what do we got next up is Spider-Man. Then after Spider-Man is... Guardians 3. Are you shitting me? Guardians is after Spider-Man? And they haven't even started Guardians. And he ain't starting it till after... Yeah. Wait, where the fuck are all the Marvel movies? Yeah, Black Panther 2 will come. Eternals. They haven't started that. They haven't started that either. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's very few things in the shoot, man. But they haven't started those. Like, they're not even anywhere yeah, near production. production. They haven't even night. officially announced Eternals yet or the cast or anything. So, so is Marvel slowing down for a year? It sounds like it. Black Widow, but they're not even close to production on that either. Like, I they're mean, currently not in production on any movie, are they? Like, there's definitely the world in which... What? Yeah. That's right, they're developing all the Disney Plus shows. But I mean, post-Endgame and post-Far From Home, which feels like it's, it'll be the Iron Man 3 to Avengers 2. Yes. It's like, Endgame 1.5. Yes. It's actually a good idea for them to fucking slow down a little bit. Like, Why? just... Let us, A, reset our expectations for what this universe is. Let us want it a little bit more. Let us not have had it for a little bit. I can't want it more than I do right now, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You see how distressed I was when I realized we're not getting three next year? What? what? No, I was like, no, no, no. That was my face when I was like, who won the presidency? <laughs> like, Oswald Cobblepot won the presidency. <laughs> Um, man, oh man, uh, that's, uh, that's a depressing thought. I mean, I guess they got to stop and make some stuff, but they were on such a heavy cliff of like... Two a year. Yeah, you done with that? Here's another. You done mm -hmm. with that? Here's another. Fuck. Um, well, you know what you will get before you get another big Marvel movie? Another Saw movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know who's making a Saw movie? It's got an interesting pedigree. Chris Rock is, is making a Saw movie. Yeah. Chris Rock's gonna uh, no. toss Saw's salad and make it brand new. It feels as if it's like, at this point, if you're a black comedian, you could make a horror movie. <laughs> which, which one? Do you doing? really feel this is Jordan Peele effect? I think it's totally the Jordan Peele effect. He's not directing, though. He's just coming up with a story. He's just kind of like rebooting and producing, whether he writes or not. But I think that idea of, uh, of comedy and horror being, to a certain degree, flip sides of the same coin. Yeah. Because um, they're all about precision and emotional manipulation, right? Like, I'm going to get you to do a thing your body didn't expect it to do, which is either laugh or jump. I am no Jordan Peele, but as a guy who's made some comedy and then made Red State and Tusk, I found that the reaction buttons are very close to one another. If you can make somebody laugh, you can also unnerve them fairly easily. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I guess it makes sense. You know, and so, so I get it. Like, if he's a horror fan, which I, it seems he is, and he wants to fucking do it, I get rolling the dice. And it's Blumhouse, so it's like, fuck it, roll the dice. Make a $5 million Saw movie. Is Saw a Blumhouse movie? Uh, no, it wasn't it before. Is, it, it was it's, Lionsgate. It's Lionsgate, but James Blum is producing it. James Wan. James Wan, not Blum. Right. Blum's not involved. Did I get that wrong? Twisted Pictures. I was going to say, why would they let him yeah, in? Yeah. They've it's made, Lionsgate. Right. They've made plenty of money without him. They don't we need his help. That. Um, he does everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's coming uh, October 23rd, 2020. Good for Chris, man. Fucking, that's it. Diversify that uh, portfolio, man. And he's been directing quite a bit lately. He just did the Keenan Thompson pilot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Get that money. And, and also that, like, 
respect. Like people going, oh, he's not just a comedian. He could do all these other things as well. Mm -hmm. It's important to be able to spin a bunch of plates now. If you could do one thing, you better do that one thing in this insanely exceptional way that nobody else can do a thing like that thing. Because otherwise people are going to be like, uh-huh, what else can you do? Because everyone multitasks now. So it's smart for him to be doing that. Um, they are staffing up and casting up the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. Um, so you're right. They are concentrating on the fucking TV shows. And Kevin Feige's heavily involved in those shows. Yeah, yeah it's through Marvel Studios, not Marvel TV. So it's a Feige joint. Wow. Uh, Daniel Bruhl is returning as Zemo. V really? Yeah. What do you mean? They cast How? him as Zemo. And is this a pre, like what are they? He doesn't die at the end of, of uh, Winter Soldier. Do you think they'll let him put that fucking mask on? Yeah. Oh. I mean, look, I was always buying a subscription, but that will make me buy two. <laughs> That's the only thing in Civil War that I like, not, didn't find fault with, but I was like, I wish he had put on that mask. Yeah. And I saw like a, an early concept drawing of what the mask could look like. And it would have looked really dope. So yeah, if they bring him back, they yeah. might be able to mask him up. They're bringing him back and they're bringing Emily Van Camp as Sharon Carter back. Oh. Yeah, and apparently the rumor, again, it's the internet, so who knows what, they will address and incorporate the fact that now Anthony Mackie is playing Captain America. So this is a post-snap adventure? This is the post-snap adventure. I'm even more intrigued. For some reason, I thought this was all pre-snap or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So that means he'll be Cap. Yeah. Not Falcon. Not Falcon. So uh, weren't they calling it? Still are. And I think there is also a world in which they were calling it that before Endgame, so as to not spoil it. Right. But for the time being, it is still Falcon and Winter Soldier. Wow. Did you lose your mind, Nate? <laughs> <gasps> what is it? Is it called Captain Winter Soldier versus Falcon Winter Soldier? That's right. That'd be yeah. weird. It's awesome. Uh, I'm ready for that show. I'm ready for all those shows, man. That's a good idea. And especially if they're letting the guy who did the movies, like if Kevin Feige's overseeing it, oh, they're going to tie in so well and shit. This is the dream. Like, you know, as much as we all love those Marvel Netflix shows, it, clearly the cinematic universe was like, dare who? <laughs> Jessica what? Like, they didn't really acknowledge them. So having a show, an ongoing series that is not only acknowledged by the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but comes from the minds of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. so it's tied in and shit. That's, that's the dream, it's fantastic. Although I'm still a little troubled by the fact that there's no two Marvel movies next year. Are we sure about that? Somebody wanna get online? Spider-Man is the last one for a minute? I think so. I mean, the comments will tell us that we were wrong. I hope so. Maybe there's something we're forgetting. I mean, we are getting sequels. You fucking moron, your job was to look at the news. Know some fucking news. Black Pan Internet we know boy. there's Black Panther and we know there's Guardians coming, but they haven't yeah. started those. And we know there's a Captain Marvel 2 coming. But they haven't started still. Right. None of these have been started yet. Right, and we know there's an Asgardians of the Galaxy, because that's totally what they're going to fucking call that. And Guards is doing, uh, Gun's doing Squad before he even goes back. Mm -hmm. ah, God damn it. I'm sorry, I keep retreading, but... I know, it's really alarming to think that fucking didn't things are not going to be the way they were. I hate fucking change, Mark. <laughs> Um, what else we got? Uh, I think the last one we'll hit before we go to Q&A is um, Hulu, uh, who, you know, I've, I've worked for them before on a Stephen King show before. Uh, they want to be in the Stephen King business really badly, so they're making an Eyes of the Dragon TV show. Did you ever read the Eyes of the Dragon? Uh, it is his... Game of Thrones, basically. It's his high fantasy. It's his, like, dragons and wizards and sorcerers and Stephen King knights. wrote a fucking wizard thing? Yeah. Really? I think he wrote it as a kind of bedtime story for, uh, for one of his kids. And was like, yeah, well, don't you want to deal with fucking evil clowns and fucking demon dogs? Like, I'm going to do fantasy. Oh. And the big bad guy is Randall Flagg, who is also the big bad guy in The Stand and is also the big bad guy. Are you shitting me? Yeah. And Randall so Flagg is the bad guy in that world as well? Yeah. It's and he's also the bad guy in fucking Dark Tower, isn't yep. he? And so this is part of his whole giant fucking connected oh, universe thing. That's fucking dope. I had no idea he used him as much as the... That's his own devil. Yeah. That's cool. He built his own thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that's, the, that's currently in production. I think Seth Graham Smith is writing it, the dude who did... Uh, the Abe Lincoln, Lincoln Vampire, Vampire Hunter. Killer or Hunter. Um, so yeah, that's coming. So in case you're jonesing for Stephen King and 
More the King. connected universe, Dark Tower. Speaking of Hulu, I saw Rise of the Dragon. an animation test on Howard the Duck. Yeah? Looked really fucking great. Ooh. Like, really, really amazing. And, uh, like, uh, Dave Willis, who's the, the, you know, really the captain of our ship, um, he come from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. He created oh. that show. Um, he had written like a little bit for them to do for the animation test because you go out to a bunch of different houses and you're like, here, man, do what you can for this like two minutes. And uh, it was a, a quack foo sequence and it was fucking fantastic. <laughs> so that's moving along at a at a slow pace, but a pace nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, animation is slow anyway. Credibly, unless it's South Park, in which like they're doing it every week. Yeah. But everything else takes forever. Um, but yeah, that's so far so good. Looking good there. Like hence the announcement of Rick and Morty season four. Oh, so exciting. I know. But not until November. November? November. But I, I believe they've been working on it for like two years already. Yeah, well, one of those years was just negotiations though, right? Remember mm -hmm. for a minute? Oh, like, that's right. They had to figure out whether they were coming back. And then they made that huge fucking deal. And so it made sense that they're like, they're coming. Um, yeah, I can't wait, man. That'll make up for the lack of Marvel movies next year as we'll have some more Rick and Morty. <laughs> I just need distractions, Mark. Just keep me fucking Ugh. full with distractions. Is that all the news? That is all the news. Give it up friend. for Mark. He read you the news. <laughs> all right, folks. Now we come to the time of the show. Yeah, we can put it there. Um, that is the Q&A part of the show, man. That's where you, the audience, gets involved. You provide the content for, shit for us to talk about. Uh, we have three uh, sets of prizes here, and they're all the same prize, but uh, there's three sets of them. Uh, you're going to win if you ask a question, and we like that question. Uh, you're going to win tickets, two tickets to uh, 40X Theatrical Experience, the 40X Theater uh, is right here in downtown, where is that? Down to LA Live. At LA Live. Um, if you've never seen a movie in 40X, and the 40X tickets come courtesy of our good friend, Brad Deacon. If you've never seen a 40X film, uh, oh my God, the chair vibrates until you come all over the place. It's, <laughs> that's, they won't put that on the ticket, but that's how I see it. Um, it is a fantastic experience, and boy, oh boy, I said to somebody, man, you should go see fucking Avengers Endgame and then these chairs. And somebody came back like, I did. And they just talk a lot in that movie. <laughs> so their chair didn't do a lot of this shit and whatnot. Um, I thought it was gonna be, I did and I can't walk anymore. <laughs> yes, for the wick of it all. <laughs> um, it's a great experience, man. And so if you ask a question, we like it. We're gonna give you two tickets to a 40X movie and you're gonna win this sweet ass signed by me and Mark Print done by Nate. Uh, King of the Podcasters featuring uh, yours truly as uh, Godzilla of sorts and Mark screaming as he always does whenever no. we encounter one Godzilla, of those. Godzilla, right? Um, all right, so uh, JC, who is the owner of this here establishment, he's got the microphone in his hands. He's going to pick three people uh, and we're going to dive into the Q&A. So JC, pick away. Boy, you didn't even try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just literally pointed to the guy in front of you. What's your name, sir? Hey guys, I'm Enrique. Enrique, everyone give it up for Enrique. <laughs> How are you, sir? How adorable you applauded yourself. That was great. Hey guys. How are you? <laughs> I made it. Okay, so here's a little conspiratorial question. Why is it that the latest Marvel villains, meaning Killmonger and Thanos, because nobody really gives a shit about Thor sister and the vibrating lady. Are vibrating lady from Ant Man and the Wasp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn, harsh enough. I believe that's what her action figure says vibrating lady. <laughs> She's very popular for a certain segment of the population. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What, 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 why is it that Killmonger and Thanos make so much social and political sense? The villains, right? I think that maybe, given that Disney are becoming a little bit our content and communication overlords, right? Yes. And we should give in to them. Why is it that both Thanos and Killmonger make so much sense as the villains? Are they trying to quell our environmental and racial unrest? 
as mass culture producers. Is that the end of the question? That's the end of okay. the question. Okay. Um, are they? <laughs> I was just <laughs> waiting for it. Um, are they? Are they trying to quell racial unrest? Was that it? Or or foment? Killmonger, foment. Killmonger like. Disney as mass producers of culture. Yes. Are trying to quell environmental arrest via Thanos and racial unrest via Killmonger. I, I don't think uh, that comes from Disney. I don't think there's a brain trust that goes, hey man, we have an agenda, say these things. Uh, I, I, like having been around it and on the inside and on the outside, it just don't work like that. Like if, if you're looking for somebody to be like, hey, who's responsible for this? In that case, it's always Kevin Feige, right? And I think it's not pushing some uh, agenda or anything. They're just trying to make a compelling character. Like, rather than just, you know, you dismissed Vibrating Lady because she doesn't really have a compelling story, right? Like, <laughs> so she's easily dismissed at, at compared to a Thanos or Killmonger who have rich, vibrant, fucking villain backstories and stuff that make them almost questionable as to whether or not, you know, they're villains from a certain perspective. You're like, oh, that kind of makes sense, except for the genocide thing, you know. So I, I think that's just a product of let's make interesting characters. I don't think they're like, you know, let's, let's use these movies for a greater purpose. The only greater purpose they're trying to get to is your fucking wallet over and over again. So that's my take on it, but you? But interesting, like, yeah. what a great fucking I, paranoid I, but wonderful thought, you. <laughs> I think that if, if Disney was trying to quell racial unrest, they would not have had a character say, throw me in the sea like my ancestors before me. They knew that death was better than bondage. They would not, and have us believe that, they would not even choose to invoke this entire line of thinking, which is, oh shit, colonizers are the worst which is ultimately what that movie's kind of about, which is like kind of a, a little bit of, if you're left to your own devices and not fucked with mercilessly, you can be amazing and have lovely technology and all that shit. And also, uh, you need to open up your borders and help people if you can help people. Like that's the ultimate message. But Killmonger is all about like, oh shit, you know who fucked us up? White people. You know how to fix that? Lots of black people with guns. <laughs> which... Doesn't Does sound not like seem to be. Doesn't sound like something that Bob Iger is like. Can you put that in a movie? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I think that'd be good for our shareholders. Right. Like the thing that's interesting is that a Disney movie actually said shit like that. Yeah. You know, it's they they found an artist that they trusted and they let that artist tell the story he wanted to tell. And if part of that story might make certain segments of the population uncomfortable, so be it. But I don't believe that there was a mandate. Um, and I think also part of the reason... I think they're letting their filmmakers bite the hand a, a lot more lately, too, because they realize, like, the culture allows it. Like, they realize how fucking big they are, that, like, there's some gigantic... Uh, I'm not going to say monopoly, but, you're, you know, they are f fast taking over every piece of media, you know, in, in the world and stuff. Um, so I... You know, God, what was I going with that? It was just a, a really salient point that I just noticed. Oh! They're, they're clearly okay with people like doing shit that you would think is counterproductive to Disney culture. But case in point, I didn't see it, but every review I read of Dumbo was like, this movie makes fun of fucking Disney, like right to its fucking face and shit. Um, so I, I don't think anyone, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying nobody's minding the store, but I don't think they care as long as like the content isn't like, this is a movie in praise of Hitler. Like, I think no, no, they're no, going to be course. okay. I, I didn't mean it to be like, there, there, there are these guys behind, it's like, oh, oh, there are these environmentalists, so we're going to make the bad guy the, the one that's thinking about the environment, so let's fucking kill them up with all the Avengers behind it, right? But maybe there's a little bit of the zeitgeist, and I don't mean to get a little bit of political. No, go ahead. No, no. But the Lego movie made the bad guy... Lord Business, or what was his name, right? The Lego Movie. The Lego Movie, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's a little bit of a, this, I guess, flowing yeah. around. I mean, and, and it's, it's one of those things where, especially like Ant-Man versus the Wasp and like Vibrating Lady, 
Like that's a small movie <laughs> yeah. with like yeah, yeah, a personal exactly. story. What was her name? Ghost. 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 Yeah. 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 But like, it's, which it's, is it's, way easier to say than vibrating lady, but that's far more evocative. Yeah, less fun. <laughs> and I <laughs> instantly knew who you were talking about. I was like, Wasp, right? <laughs> but yeah, <coughs> excuse me. And so, because that story is small, the villain's plan needs to be intimate. It needs to be personal. Whereas, like, Wakanda is all about the taking your place in the world stage, and Thanos is about galactic fucking oppression and environmentalism. Um, and like the Lego movie, it's like Lord Business is a child's idea of who their dad is. And it was all about how I can't get love from my dad, he doesn't want me to play with his toys. Like it, it, it reduces down to an inherently personal story that, that feels like it's saying a large thing. And it is about sort of the rights of the individual and what it feels to not be a number and to find your special place in the world while also occasionally. Yet it is about how no one is special because everyone's special. Right? Like Wait, isn't that what The Incredibles is about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like the plan of the villain, right? Once everyone's super, then no one will be. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's fairly common, at least in the last 20 years, maybe even longer than that, for like big entertainment companies to take shots at themselves by way of the movies go out. It's a safe position to do it from, right? Like you could be like, yeah, fuck rich people while you're a rich person. Like <laughs> that's kind of yeah. tried and true in this business. I, yeah. I mean, Des Disney is way tighter about like Mickey Mouse. Like Mickey Mouse <laughs> is never gonna be like, you know who we should kill? All the fucking ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Donald's like, why? <laughs> Is it because I don't wear pants? <laughs> yes, Donald. You know, like they're, they're way more like protective of some of that core IP that belongs to them. But when it comes down to like the fucking Marvels and when it comes down to like Pirates of the Caribbeans even to a certain degree, which gets to talk about occasionally things like, you know, race and class and gender and, and all that stuff, they have a little bit more leeway because they realize a little more distance between the brand and the product. But yeah, like Disneyland is never gonna have like the down with Whitey Day. <laughs> My guess. I mean, Black Panther 2 is coming. So like, if you had to have a day at Disney for Black Panther 2. Dude, take us into the culture, Mark. Does anybody have a down with Whitey Day? Because I might like to attend. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this about? Where am I supposed to go down to? <laughs> Um, that was a great fucking question. Thought provoking and, and uh, got great answers out of me. Mark, give it up for him. He won. Well done, Enrique. English is not the first language either, is it? No. Fucking well done, man. Could you imagine going to another country and fucking dropping. Like, dropping the word quell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Quen, not just quell, but quell in another language. Totally. And like twice. And like that's the word he stuck with. Pretty amazing. <laughs> um, you got a high bar. What's your name? Uh, my name is Grayson. Grayson? Yeah. Shut up. Fucking A, man. <laughs> Give it up for Dick, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, fuck, man. That would have been a great. Kevin Grayson would have been a great name to grow up with. <laughs> Fucking Kevin Grayson Smith. Smith. That too. Gray Smith. Or just Ooh. flat out. Gray, Gray Smith was my mother. That's her name. Gray? Grace. Oh. Well. So close. Anyway, going back Grace to you. Hey! Hey! Uh, so, Grayson, how are you? I am great. It's actually uh, my birthday, so I'm... It's your birthday? Oh. How old are you, man? Uh, 26. 26? 26. Uh, shit, man. Warner Brothers used to own this, but nobody owns it now, so let's fucking sing the song. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Grayson, a.k.a. Robin. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. What can we do you for? Uh, <laughs> so my question is, so since we're seeing like this really awesome era of comic book movies, and I'm coming from the 90s, and our generation is more into video games. So do you ever think we'll see a renaissance in this pop culture phenomenon of film with video game adaptations? Because lately, if you've seen, we have had failures constantly. We're on the right track right now, right? Didn't Detective Pikachu do kind of well? Yeah. And yeah. I haven't seen it, but my kid fucking loved it. Yeah? Yeah, did you see it? No. 
only only because Pikachu was not my generation. I agree. I I think Pikachu is a cute character and shit, and I like Ryan Reynolds. I'm happy to watch it when it hits like iTunes. But that was never something that was gonna grab me because that was some that was a '90s kid kind of thing. Yeah, it feels like video game movies, especially of that ilk, are buoyed and fueled by nostalgia. Right, like you have to be born of that age to have played that game for it to have meant a thing to you when you were nine. And so 20 years later, you're like, oh fuck, finally! They did Sonic exactly the way I hoped they were gonna do Sonic. <laughs> Creepy. Yeah, ooh, that mouth, ha! Ah. Um, but I also think there is something, uh, especially for, for older video games, that does not translate as well to movies because this, the, the engine of your enjoyment is not you're telling me a story. Right, it's I'm telling me a story using these things. And so trying to codify what had been your experience into an experience, there tends to be a gulf there. There are, there are games like, like Last of Us, which is all about story and it's telling you a story that could be a movie that every four minutes you gotta kill something. But like there's a narrative that drives you through it that I think to adapt something like that makes sense. And I also think you need to remember why people loved playing your game. Like the Assassin's Creed movie was like, hey, you know what people love about this shit? Not killing people in the Renaissance, but bullshit future intrigue and animus. Like who gives a fuck? If you play that game, you want it to be jumping from rooftops, killing motherfuckers in like Constantinople. Like that's only reason I care. Like when I play the games, it's cutscene, 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 ooh, murder. <laughs> like make that like remember why people love the game and try and give them that experience as much as you can but it's it is a dodgy thing to do because the 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 the, the tiny hole that you have to navigate to please people who are coming to it from nostalgia people who know nothing about it at all people who own the fucking IP who decide like no we got to have gold coins in here I'm like do we really yeah you got to have fucking gold coins why it's gameplay it's not enjoyment so yeah it's 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 possible but it requires a lot of patience and a lot of like, hard thinking about why anybody would want to go see a movie beyond, I recognize the title. I think like anything in the right hands can be turned into something fucking wonderful, as we've seen with like, uh, even comic book characters. Like, uh, shit, when they announced Guardians of the Galaxy, I remember being like, what? <laughs> like, really, all those characters, you're gonna pick that? You can't turn that into something good, and they turned it into something great. So I imagine there's somebody out there that can make a great video game movie, you know what I'm saying? Because it's always the same complaint you hear over and over. It's like, how do you turn that into a story? You are playing the game, it's not really a story. But I think in the right hand, somebody could pop it. I just don't, I, I don't know that there's been something that, an IP that, you know, has lent itself to the, the mainstream storytelling in the way that would connect with the three act structure like that a movie going audience looks for. You know what I'm saying? Like certainly there's no Pac-Man movie. Um, <laughs> but there should be able to be, you know, um, yeah, like that's the most obvious one, Legend of Zelda. Like how do you not fucking turn that into a, a movie yeah. or a trilogy by now? It's like that's just an adventure, right? Yeah. You know, and I think that, that even for me, one of the ones that I love the most, seeing it today, it's god awful, but Mortal Kombat, right? Because mm. the game entirely is just people punching each other. But if you decide that it's Enter the Dragon, then done. Like I found a model I can overlay on top of it where it's, we're going to an island, there's a martial arts competition, and we're just, all these characters are gonna punch each other in the face for a couple of hours until your hero gets the redemption he needs. You're probably gonna pick the wrong hero because it's gotta be Johnny Cage and who gives a fuck. But like at least it feels as if I know what this can be, I'm gonna put it on top of that, and the characters still get to do all we need it to do. And are they, they, they're forced to fight, so it's like a Secret Wars kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. And they're forced to kill each other, and that's why it's like, finish, finish him. him. Ooh, yeah. fuck, I wanna see your movie. Like, that's so good. <laughs> I'm in. See, that could yeah. be like, handled and fucking. Totally, if, yeah. if, all, if you're only nostalgic, if there's so little to the game that you can do whatever you want with it, or it's, the, it's Zelda, it's I'm gonna give you Lord of the Rings, but just fucking with Link instead of Frodo, and just like, do that. And while I haven't seen it, like, it does seem like good use of the, of the you know, the um, Pokemon IP to like take those characters and make a movie that's not like, it's just like the fucking game. From what I understand it, it's nothing like the fucking game, right? 
Like, I would prefer them to just take the world that we know. Like, if they made a Last of Us movie, it would be uncomfortable to see someone play Joel, because Troy Baker is Joel to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think no one should ever play Troy or right. um, Joel. Right. So I think they should just use, like, the universe of the games. Like, Warcraft kind of got it, but again, it was not good. It's pretty bad. It's, it's, yeah. Like, I think just the world and, like, what other characters are doing in that world would be more interesting to me, and, mm -hmm. like, them surviving if it was The Last of Us. Yeah, like, I didn't mind the last Tomb Raider movie. Because again, it's literally, it's just fucking Indiana Jones with like a lady and two guns. And like, if you can just tell me a good adventure story and drop Lara Croft into it, that's kind of all I need. Just make me enjoy it. And there is so little of that IP that's required beyond, she's got two guns, right? Yeah, maybe she gets a bow and arrow once, right? Yeah, bear midriff, done. <laughs> what would you do if somebody was like, we're gonna give you uh, two million bucks to write a video game movie. Your choice, My any choice. video game, but you have to come up with it right now. <laughs> Do you have two million dollars in your pocket? You just went to the bank. <laughs> yeah, I got this one. <laughs> um, uh, if, I had to, if I had to pick a game to write a movie about right now. <laughs> Dig Dug, who said that? Fucking A, man. Yeah. That'd be an interesting story to tell. This motherfucker's got to go underground and pump up things with air well, until they blow up. Okay. They're like, why Dig doesn't Doug. he just shoot him? It's like, because. Dig Dug. There's a bunch of fucking kids trapped underwater in fucking Thailand in some, like, spelunking accident gone awry. And who's got to fucking get him out? The best digger in the world. His name is Doug. What does he do? Doug digs. Doug. It's a fucking, like, <laughs> Disney presents Dig Dug. A heartbreaking tale of true life rescue and, and bravery. Where's my two million fucking <laughs> Who can we get to do this? My name's Doug. I, I was, got you. I was just gonna say pitfall, but I like that way more. <laughs> uh, that was a great question and it yielded great responses. Give it up for everyone. What if, like, what if you got, like, Catherine Bigelow to do a Metroid movie? What was the plot of that game? It's... Uh, some balls at each other? Adventure. <laughs> it's like a space adventure where you have to kill the big mother brain, but you, as a kid, when you played Metroid, you were this Wait, little oh, space fuck man. That. Fuck that, man. You know what game we can fucking make a movie of? Hmm. Tron. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, you're right. Almost any fucking well, space game. So the it. big reveal in 1986 was when you win the game, you take your helmet off and it's a lady that you've been playing with. So all the little boys were like, what? What? I'm a girl. But it would be perfect for 2019. For this day and age. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're right. Fucking well done. Also, last thing. Today is the 39th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back's release. Is if we really? didn't mention that... Today here, here we are also. at uh, Scum and Villainy Cantina on the 39th anniversary of the release of, of Empire the day Strikes it came Bad. out. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I saw it opening day. I mean, the, the, my world wasn't engineered like that back then because <laughs> my old man brought me to the movie, so I would go when he was free, and like there was no like it's Friday the movie came out. That happened later, like in preteens, when I started hanging out with friends and going to the movies like every fucking weekend. And then sometimes we just went and like, like I remember once we were, there was like, we were five 11 year olds and we went to see Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> Three fucking hours, man. And, and I was the one that called for it. I was like, we should see Gandhi. And what the other fucking poor cats were looking at me going like, why? I was like, no, hold on, it's about to get good. No, it's like a mummy movie, he's got sand powers. <laughs> no, hold on, he's gonna get hungry, hold on. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. Danger wank! <laughs> um, yeah, man, that's, uh, I don't know, that's fucking crazy. So anyway, if I, if I did indeed go on day one, which I may have, because I remember dragging my parents to, uh, like, uh, what did they call it when they re-ran movies back in the day? Oh, uh, for extended engagement. Second, second run, run, thank you. Uh, and they would do second run, not like you know, two dollar house or a dollar house. Second run meaning like a year later they brought Star Wars back out and shit. And so when they had the trailer 
for the Empire Strikes Back, the very first one, they re-released Star Wars and put that trailer on it and stuff. And I convinced, it was just something that like, they would do a lot later on like in the future. Now they don't do it at all because you just watch trailers online. But what was the movie? What was the what was the movie we all went to see? Because it had a was it the Star Wars trailer? It was the, Wing Commander. Yes, yeah. had the the Phantom Menace. Yes, had fan, I paid cash money for that. Fuck shit. yeah, I went to Times Square. Like I dodged fucking porn theaters to go and like <gasps> and meet Joe Black at as well. It was it was Waterboy and Meet Joe Black was the teaser, and then right. Wing Commander was the, the yeah. real trailer. And Wing Commander was like had the number seven gross that week. Yes, because like who the fuck knew Wing Commander? Nope. Everybody went there for five minutes. It was the Star Wars effect. That was also when they re-released Star Wars in 78 or 79 when they added the A New Hope title to it. It was the 79 re-release. Yeah, the 77 didn't. It just said Star Wars. Star Wars. Wars. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that. A um, little bit of fucking trivia there. Give it up for JC, man. <laughs> well done. Um, well, if I indeed go on, went on day one, then 39 years ago in the time stream, I'm sitting in a movie theater with my mom and dad and having my mind fucking shredded. Like that was, you know, I was, I came in for Star Wars 2 and they gave me something so much fucking better. And I thought I liked Star Wars, but after Empire I was like, fuck Star Wars. Like <laughs> this is the fucking universe. Oh, I love that movie so much. Even as a fucking kid, I was just like, this is class. Like this is fucking, this was better than the other one and shit. Um, what about you? Did you go see it? Uh, it theater? would not have been first run. No. Like, I, I, I don't think I could have amassed the uh, parental initiative to do that. To like, we gotta go Friday night! It's like, well, it's not going anywhere. Like, let's go see it in fucking August. That, yes, that, that was the feeling back then. It wasn't even like, oh, we'll go next week. It's just like, well. Yeah, it was like a summer vacation, and it rained wherever we were. And it's like, well, fuck. All right, let's go to the movies. What's in the... He likes the fucking space pictures. Let's just go and see this one. I'm like... Bleh, 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 and then we end up seeing it three months late. And yeah, it's the, it's the movie that teaches a generation about tragedy, right? Like, oh, shit. It doesn't have to end well. Your hero can lose. Oh, shit. I learned that shit on the Bad News Bears, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Bad News Bears of Star Wars movies. <laughs> Where they lost at the end. Yeah, it was so fucking eye-opening and wonderful. And, and, and also, like, I remember, like, it was something that I could bond with my parents over because even they were kind of like, he's his father, you know? Like, they weren't steeped in Star Wars but knew enough about it. And, you know, it's a story that even if you're not deep into it, they, you know, it's all presented right there yeah. in that movie. So I remember the whole ride home, them talking about that with me and enjoying that I was so fucking engaged. Like they, they saw their son come to life in regards to this shit. So they fed into it by being like, oh, did you know that was his dad? I was like, fuck no, nobody did, you idiots. Like that's, <laughs> that's one of the greatest cinematic secrets of all time. Shut up, turn around, drive. <laughs> that's when I sit back here and think about what I saw. <laughs> 39 years, fuck man. Yeah. I wonder what they're going to do for the 40th. Big party? Stower celebration in Anaheim. Is that right? That's a big party. It is, yeah. And I think last week was the 20th anniversary of Phantom Menace? Yeah. The 19th? 20th anniversary of that? So that happened. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, we didn't obviously didn't get as much gas out of that one, did we? We're like, Empire, holy shit, let's do 20 minutes. Phantom Menace, that happened as well. I mean, I, I, I do think that, that in, if, if Empire is the movie that teaches a generation about sort of trauma and tragedy, then Phantom Menace is the one that teaches a generation about disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, I waited my whole life for this. Yes. It taught one generation disappointment, but another generation it taught like, hey man, this is your Star Wars. I know. And Go they, for it, man. They seem to dig it. Their kids out there still love Jar Jar. Go figure. I do feel like I... Before Rise of Skywalker comes out, I sort of owe myself one big rewatch of mm -hmm. everything, like Soup to Nuts. I'm hoping there's some theater. I'm hoping Disney allows somebody to do this, because for a long time they were super fucking tight about re-releasing those movies in theaters. So I'm hoping that by this time they like, you know what, let's do a fucking... A it, marathon? It pains me to say, let's go to the El Capitan for like 20 hours and watch Star Wars movies. Do the saga. Do the saga. Soup to Nuts. I'll do that with you. 
I'll my, buy the popcorn. My knee still doesn't work right from fucking that first Avengers marathon, man. 32 hours in the El Cap seats. I'd be all for that. No, I wouldn't do it at the El Cap because those seats suck. They're the worst. Um, I know. They're really uncomfortable. But like, I would go to like one of those layback chair yeah. theaters and shit. I would do 20 hours of Star Wars. There's a, there's a dine-in theater in Marina Del Rey. Yes. Yes, AMC. there is. Yeah, yeah there is. I did, I did the Hobbit marathon there. The I only mean, you could you keep eating the whole time. Yeah. It'd be like watching a movie at home. It'd be like living the Wally future we've always wanted. <laughs> Cupcake through a straw, please. <laughs> um, all right. All right, last question. Pick them, JC. What's your name, sir? A team. What is a it? Team. A team. A team? Yeah. Give it up for a team, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you. What's on the shirt? Well, I got it. Doesn't, it doesn't do that good. Yeah. Uh, Blue milk. Some nice. of that sweet cantina merch. Yeah. Is that here? Is that a shirt from here? It's uh, May the 4th. May the 4th. You guys made those? Fucking sweet. <laughs> Very uh, nice. Side note, and this is a reference to, and this is a reference to uh, episode, well, a podcast. Uh, you guys, well, I listen to you guys a lot, so Thank I'm going to reference something uh, that you mentioned a while back. That we may or may not funny. remember. True story. Earlier today, me and my girlfriend were walking down the alley, walking down the street here, and I saw the alley to this building, and I said, thought to myself and said out loud, oh, that's where Kevin and Marks talked about blowing each other. And, so, <laughs> 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 <it's> like, <laughs> and you were like, let's <laughs> see if it's talk. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, I just... I see one guy in a baseball hat, and... Uh, <laughs> that hat's bobbing, <laughs> and the other guy sure is smiling a lot. <laughs> okay, um, my question, so... I always, I'm a big, I've always, well, Batman movies, for the most part, have been pretty good, and I'm a big Bane fan, hmm. and I always felt like he hasn't been done right, even though it's been twice in... Um, his last iteration was pretty good. The one on Gotham? Uh, no, no. Oh, I, I didn't. Was the oh, one oh. on Gotham? I didn't see it. How was the Gotham iteration? Wait, he's in Gotham? Bad? I, really? All right, so I, we're I, talking I, about Tom I don't watch Hardy. Gotham, so, you know. So what was the other? Oh, the other uh, one was in Batman yeah, uh, uh, and Robin? Batman Rises. Or Dark Knight Rises, Dark Knight Rises. Well, that yeah. was the one, but yeah. what was the other? Um, Batman, the one, uh, Batman uh, and Robin. We don't acknowledge that one. That, that yeah. one, right. Yeah. yeah. With Poison Ivy, that's right. So, if, if, if DC ever got their shit together, I've always wanted to see, my, I'm a big fan of the Knights trilogy, going back to the comic books, Night, you know, Night, Nightfall, Night Quest, mm -hmm. um, Night's End. Yeah. So if they were to make a movie based on that, and I know it'd be pretty long and Batman would have to be established, focusing on that, 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 that trilogy, who would be like? Who would be your choice to be Bane, Azrael, or well, mainly Bane, Azrael? Um, and like, how many movies do you think that would be? Because that's a long series, you know, to do. I mean, well, I think you get three, right? Like, right. they won't give you any more than that, right? Um, but, you get your trilogy, and and it's set up for that because there's like three chapters. They just got to compress, yeah, so much into each movie. But but also, I, and I'm bringing up Bane because. I remember he was teased for the longest time before he actually showed up and started kicking ass. So, right. And it made me think about how Marvel, the MCU, teased Thanos you know, for six years. And so I was like, okay, if you're to focus not just on a collaboration of different characters, but focus on one character and bring in a comic book villain tease, but make it last for a long series, like how would you do it? Mm. Um, well, Bane, if we're doing real Bane, he's got to be Latin, correct? Yes. How would the band voice sound? How would the band voice sound? <laughs> I, uh, I, I go Javier Bardem. Ooh! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> that one's on me. What a good fucking call. Holy shit, he'd be good. And we've seen him do a version of it in that one Bond movie where he had no jaw. <laughs> Remember he took his jaw out and shit? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was creepy. Yeah, he'd be yeah. fucking good. I think, I think, try yeah, I bet you he'd be like, I've played that character before. <laughs> I've done that. Yeah. I don't need to And then he'd shoot you in the head with that cattle prod thing. 
flip a coin. Uh, uh, all right. As good we, uh, fucking call. Fuck, that was good. I can't beat that. Uh, I was going to say Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was good. <laughs> Javier Bardem. Pedro Pascal. Say again? Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Ooh, he'd be good. Pedro Pascal, who's the Manchurian? Oh, the Mandalorian, the Manchurian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess, but he's, he's, I mean, that dude occurs to me as incredibly in shape, but not like yeah. ripped and shit like that. But Harvey Bardem seems like the kind of actor that's like, I put on 100 pounds of muscle weight, man. You know, just to fucking <laughs> go method and crazy. Um, oh, God, that's yeah. a good idea. I think I go Army Hammer for, uh, for Ezreal. Oh my God! I'm sorry. Am I taking? Am I taking all of it from? That you? is fucking fantastic, man. Because he looks like a fucking angel, that army hammer and shit. Mm. But he acts like the devil, and <laughs> and that's what that character has to devolve into madness and shit. Good fucking pull, man. Two really great pulls. And what was the last one we need? I guess who would be Batman? I mean, it's, it's who would be Batman? <laughs> and because it's three movies, it's it's Nightfall, Nightfall, Night Quest, and then Night's, Night's uh, End. Yeah, Night's End. And Night's End is when he comes back and shit. Yeah. So you've got an interesting trilogy where, like, Bruce Wayne isn't even going to be a part of part two. Right. Technically. Maybe they cut to him in the bed going, ow! You know, and that's about it. <laughs> it hurts! My <laughs> back! Um, he but did then that he side comes... quest. I, I didn't collect that's that true. those comics, but um, he did that side thing in South America. or, or That's true, but Central nobody's interested America. in yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to see Azrael Batman killing people yeah. and going crazy. Because he's got a mad queen or mad king yeah. storyline himself. Yeah. That's good. I hadn't thought about that, man. They should fucking do that. All right, but who's Batman? Who's Batman? With all due respect to Robert Pattinson, who is going to be Batman. But in this version of Batman, and you have to have an older Batman who's been Batman for quite some time, so you can't have a young Batman. You know, I, I always say John Hamm, like, mm. even when I come. Um, <laughs> I am Dijon Ham. I am. <laughs> um, so I won't say I am. John Ham this time. Uh, who could be an older Batman? You know, I think I've said it once before on the show, so it's not a very original idea, but I, I, think, I think you give Clooney another bite at it, man. And not like the, you know, the Joel Schumacher version, like the fucking, like, here's the actor, actor version. Like, you know, go crazy. I think he'd be a good old Batman. Not a good old Batman, but a good old Batman. You could bring back Affleck. Affleck as well, but he just did it, right? And he clearly don't want to do it no more. Um, what, who do you, what do you think? You, look, uh, let's go to you. You've had two fucking <laughs> amazing polls. You're going to say something like, Jesus, I'm going to drop the mic. And you're like, <laughs> back, Jesus, you're right. Uh, you can't okay. do Army Hammer because you've already told Army Hammer. All right. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you the one that they probably do and the one that they won't do, but I think they should. All right, hold on. Wait, I'm going to find out which one I want more. Okay. I, w I want to hear your version first and then let me down gently after with their version. Uh, I've been watching Star Trek Discovery, the second season. Anson Mount, has, uh, as, as Captain Pike, has been doing fucking amazing work. Like, Who is that? He was... Uh, he was Black Bolt, who never fucking said oh, anything. Oh, yeah, he was on that fucking Canadian Western show that was yeah. on AMC. Yeah, uh, like uh, the fucking train. Hell on Wheels. Hell on Wheels. He's a good actor. Yeah, he was good, good at Black Bolt in he's that show. He's great in, in Star Trek Discovery. Um, and he's like, he's old enough. He's got the salt and pepper hair. He's got some miles on him. Like, you, could, you, could, you, you can play him a little bit younger without doing too much. And then he's salt and pepper Bruce Wayne later. Um, if they're making this, the one that they do choose is Brad Pitt. And I think that thanks to the magic fucking Marvel technology, you could youngify Brad Pitt. Uh, or even fucking Gemini Man. Did you see the Gemini Man trailer? Yeah. Where it's like young Will Smith and old Will. And it's like, that's fucking young Will Smith. Well, it's more I old mean, Will Smith and then a cartoon of young Will Smith. Right. But like when I looked at it, like I was like, I don't get it. What's, and I'm like, oh, he's meant to be him, not a early CG version of him or something right. like that. So it's like, meant to be a younger version of him. Totally. I, I, they didn't quite nail it like Marvel's nailed it. Right. But it's like, or am I, am I alone in that? Have, has everyone reacted well to that? And um, they reacted way better than Will Smith as the genie. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I think the movie looks good, but I, I just, like, yeah. I, it looked to me like CG. Yeah. Whereas those, Mar like when they did Robert Downey Jr. and they did Michelle Pfeiffer, 
that looked like that was for real. Like, yeah. it was like they can they could at this point do an entire movie of that. And right, isn't that what Martin Scorsese's doing with the Irishman or something? Uh, like yeah. he's de-aging everybody in it. Yeah. And they did Sam a whole Jackson. movie where they de aged yeah. Sam Jackson. Yeah, like they could pull that off. And Sam Jackson's easier because A Because Jack don't crack. Because Jack don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the, enough markers are there that you only gotta fudge ten years to make him look forty <laughs> years younger. They're like, oh yeah, he's that guy again. Um, but yeah, I go Brad Pitt. And I think like old Brad Pitt, like post broken Brad Pitt, like he's still one of the finest fucking actors of his generation. He is actually, it's weird when you say, I had never thought about that before, but I'm like, I would actually like to see Brad Pitt fucking do Bruce Wayne and shit. He'd eat a lot, I know that much. Because <laughs> that's Brad Pitt's like go-to acting yeah, thing. He just, just sits like... there and eats french fries. <laughs> I don't know, Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy. He's crazy. Um, I like your casting way better than mine, as per usual and shit. Um, did you give us a Batman yet? Did, yeah, I did. I want George Clooney. Clooney. I said George give Clooney, George Clooney right. another bite. But yours okay. was even better and shit. But more importantly, I, you just made me go like, ooh, I would like to see that. That is a possible go-to for them in the future. I mean, Nolan you know, bit a little bit for Dark Knight Rises in as much as like, hey, there's Bane breaking back man, Batman's back. But I, you know, I think they could... Uh, they could withstand to do that again, maybe within the, maybe ten years from now, because then they're far enough away from like Nolan's Bane true, that true. somebody could give it an honest shot. But then Javier Bardem will be like eighty-six. He will be an, an elderly gentleman, yeah. but yeah. which so, could work. You could still have old Bane. You don't need like fucking. Did you see Arnold Schwarzenegger attempt to get knocked down by a <laughs> by a dude in fucking Brazil or whatever? And he, how old is that man? Seventy-one years old. Seventy-one. For and he shrugged off a dude with a surprise drop kick. It was incredible. Like our, a seventy-one-year-old Arnold Schwarzenegger standing in public somewhere. A kid comes out of nowhere, fucking drop kicks him, <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> and then goes back to his conversation. <laughs> Um, Kick yeah, me, was, I'm here! <laughs> it was pretty fucking, pretty amazing. Um, all right. Yeah. Is that satisfying? That's Perfect. a great question. Thank you. It's a great answer. It deserves a great prize. Give it up. He won, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Pleasure. Oh my God, everything's been signed. Our prize has been given out. The news is done. That means yeah. the tank is empty and the show is at an end. Have you had a good time, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. I can't thank you enough for being here, but let's be honest, there is no show without the guy sitting here to my left who finds the news for us and has all the best ideas. Give it up for Mr. Mark Bernardin, ladies and gentlemen. And that is Fat Man Beyond for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I am Mark Bernardin. Tune in next week, same fat time, same fat channel, smodcast.com or youtube.com slash Kevin Smith. Good night, everybody.